first of a war, parents couldn't have planned for this. Play by herself, I found the beast would come when she called. Developed the skill until the day the fire rained down. The mist dragon died, and so the summoner, her mother died along with it. The little girl cried, these dark men, they came to her side. It's so hard to revisit, memories rock. She thought of brighter days, the way her father smiled, the way her mother stayed. At home, the teacher bowed faith, how even the monsters can help you find your way. To speak to them, deep within her anger rose and developed. She shifted plates beneath the ground when they settled, yeah. And she split open the earth because the titan came. Took them all away, and took them all away. Summon every instinct, summon everything that you can. Hello, everybody. How is everyone doing tonight? Oh, you know what? I need to turn my light on. That's a bit better now, isn't it now? <laughs> so hopefully you guys are doing great tonight. Uh, this is a Rydia% Percent 101 tutorial for anybody who has not done one of these seeds yet and would like to learn them. And how is it going, Dragonfire? Good to have you here tonight. So um, this is going to be a fairly bland stream. Uh, I'm just going to go through and explain exactly what we're dealing with here as far as Rydia Percent. Now, the current flags that I have, and hey, how is it going, Dragon Slayer? Good to have you as well, too. Welcome back to Low Roll. Now, the current flags that I am running are right there. Those, these flags are also up here if you guys would like to see exactly what I am doing today. But in short, um, this is a really good tutorial seed for anybody who is really new to just learning how to do free enterprise or just plain doing Rydia Percent. Absolutely. Oh yeah, let me get my, uh, let me get my bot going here. How's it going there? Kayla, good to have you here tonight. We are doing excellent. Yeah, let me let me run that. I actually had that turned off for a sec because I was like resetting a few commands with it. Should should come up in in just a second. Then you guys can fight some bosses along with me, of course. Good times indeed. So how is everybody today? Hopefully you guys are doing great. So anyway, um, the current flags that I have for this seed, um, the, the biggest ones to take note of are the, the fact that this is a new version, this is a new uh, tutorial that I am doing since, um, but the last one I had was for version 3.0. This is actually for version 4.0, so... If you guys would like to see that tutorial, definitely check out my YouTube, and we, you guys can take a look at that as well. So, the biggest difference is that the, the flags are all named more proper names than they are just like single letters and numbers. So, instead of actually seeing a bunch of like abbreviations, you got a whole bunch of different names and stuff, and they mean quite a bit of different things as you guys can see here so from top to bottom um, the O flag means objectives now in the old version of free enterprise there did not used to be um, this type of categorization of flags you have like a whole bunch of them now separated into categories which are a little bit more easier to understand I mean, they were sort of that way before, but now you have a lot more dealing with it as well, too. Exactly. And S standards, that's another thing thing to, to note here, since we have the S standard flag on. Um, this, this is a, it's a little bit more generous than it, than it was with the old S2 flag. So you have a little bit more stuff in the shops. But it's not quite as generous as the S3 flag was back in those days. Exactly. Doing good? Hard to hear because of the kids. How are you? I'm, I'm doing awesome, you know. So yeah, we are just going through this. Showing you guys exactly what I do. And if you guys would like to um, download the seed and play along with me, 
there it is right there. That is the seat that I am running. It is called Ridia 101. So, if anybody would like to, to actually uh, play along with me, there you go right there. You can play offline. You don't have to be streaming or anything like that. Just go ahead and download that. I also recommend that you guys download the tracker, which is which is something that you can can use offline as well too. So, so let me uh, pull that up as well too. And the, and the tracker, the link for the tracker is right here. That's the one that I use. There is another one that, that is made by Skull Kitty. You can use that one. It doesn't matter. But I like to use this one because it has a lot more uh, detail. So, and the thing is, all I have to do is copy and paste my flags from the Free Enterprise website into where that tracker is. Launch it. It pops up just like that. And there you go. Now I can say I have Iridia here and stuff like that. You can see like... All this stuff here has all been updated as well, too. Um, you'll see, like, flags and objectives there. You can see all the different stuff that, that goes on with that. And you're like, whoa, what's a random objective? You can actually enter some text in there, you know? Or, or you can search for it, like, get Cecil or whatever. Now, the thing is, with um, version 4.0 of the Free Enterprise Randomizer... There are a ton of different objectives that people can use. So... Hey, bro. Hey, how's it going, Cecil? Hopefully you're doing great. Yeah, I slept really good. Awesome. Uh, I just would like to uh, let you know that we are live right now. We are actually uh, doing the tutorial right now. Great to have you. Love those radio yeah. love emotes. And so, if anybody would like to uh, ask any questions, this is open mic. We have a Discord there that you can join. And... And that's that's pretty much about all it. Oh, I may have, I may have to mute you, um, Cecil, because you are echoing a bit. Oh, let me, let me try to fix that. Alright. So, yeah, the... There's a whole bunch of stuff you could do with this tracker. It's not overly complicated or anything like that. It has like the locations that you can you can check off the characters, locations as well as the town and, and shop tracker. And you can see like all the stuff here. It's it's actually very useful for anybody as a beginner to start any of these seeds. So. Again, if, if you guys think I am going too fast, please stop me. Ask any questions that you guys would like. This is pretty much for you guys. I would love to see um, more people get involved with this because we, we definitely would like to start our um, Radio Percent of the Week League Racing as well. So... That, that, that's another thing that I am going to be doing is I'm going to be hosting those races and whoever uh, participates will get gift subs and whoever wins will get tier 2 gift subs. So, so that is something that is a thing here. So this isn't just, just for, um, for you guys, but if you guys, just to give you guys a bonus incentive... Come play some races. Do, do some things. Try it out. You know, I would love to have more people do this. Because, honestly, the more of you guys that get in, gets involved with this, the better this, this, this flag set will be. Because then you guys will have inputs into, well, hey, Tifa, maybe you should change this flag. Maybe you should change that flag and stuff like that. And then we can host our own customized Rydia Percent races every week and be like well hey maybe i want to do a dark matter or a giant percent or anything like that maybe i want to go up to the moon maybe i want to hunt and kill valvalis you know because valvalis is an is another option in version 4.0 you can actually set her as an objective and that will make a ridia percent seed very very difficult so <laughs> with that being said um the fact that I have one random objective here, that could be any objective. 
we could actually go out and uh, and and as soon as the as soon as the seed starts, you'll see what that objective is. It'll be in the in-game tracker. We won't know what that is until we start the seed. So that's what makes it quite exciting. Is you have you can have set objectives and you can have random objectives as well too. Now that win crystal flag there, that means that you have to actually go and kill Zeromas. As soon as you complete that objective, you get the crystal, and then you you go and kill Zeromas. Now there is uh, another flag which which has it just makes you win the game. And usually those seeds like that can be quite a bit faster depending on what objective you're facing as. So that's what makes it real interesting is you can have really fast seeds or you can have really, really slow seeds depending on how much you vary your objectives as well too. Now I'm sure any of you guys who have seen the Fabu Gauntlet seeds, they know that they have five random objectives and thank you again for that host, Cecil. I appreciate that. Awesomeness. And another thing is, is um, you can set it from one to five, and you can set like, like eight custom objectives. So you could have a monstrosity of objectives. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely crazy what you can do with all these objectives. But you know. What I, what I suggest you guys do is if you want to know like all the different objectives, go to the website ff4fe.com yourself with just the HTTP, no HTTPS, and check that out. Because there are a whole bunch of them. I cannot explain all of them in, in grave detail. But it involves pretty much anything from finding a character to killing a boss to completing a certain quest to getting a certain item etc 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 moving on um the key the k flag that usually just means where are the key items going to be you notice that we have 17 possible key items in free enterprise now the main spots would be like off the main bosses and the summon spots would be off the summon quests for Rydia, such as Bahamut, Leviathan, Asura, and, and Odin. Those could potentially have key items. So those flags in particular, they have not changed uh, at all. There is also a traps flag and a um, unsafe flag where you can make it so that you have to go up to the moon first before you go to the underworld. Now, moving on, uh, the, the, the P flag, that's a, that's a key item. That, that tells you where the pass is. You can have pass as a key item, and if you only have, like, let's say, K main on, that means that you, you would lose one key item. You can only get 16 out of 17. So, that's something to keep in mind. But that just means that the pass is a key item. And for those of you not familiar with Free Enterprise, the pass is something that you you take to Entroya to go and see a bunch of dancing girls. Well, instead of that, it, it takes you up to up to Zeromas. So that's a shortcut item. So for those of you that have played that, that has not changed. There is also two other options. The pass could be in three untrapped treasure chests, or it could be in a shop, which is the um vanilla version of it pretty much and hey how is it going going lord gruber yes so this this run is going to be a five radio only run that is correct absolutely so that is what we are showing off here and as i run this i will show you guys exactly what i'm doing so absolutely and that is what the the c flag means right there See, relax usually just means like, you know, you can have like characters pretty much anywhere. Now, only Rydia, that's what that, that means precisely. Only Rydia. Only Rydia means only Rydia and nobody else. So that is what we call the Rydia percent. You have five Rydias and no other characters. So that's what those flags mean. Um, there are a few other flags as well. You know, you can limit the number of distinct characters. You can start with certain characters. There's all kinds of ways that you can actually customize your characters 
depending on what kind of seed you have. <laughs> I just ran a pure Cecil seed yesterday. It took a bit, bit to get running. Well, you are in luck, Mark Hoover. My friend Cecil Barrett here is in chat. And he can... No, really? Yes. And he can tell you all about the Cecil percent. Because that is something that he loves to do himself. So Dude, let me give I him... I run Cecil percents all the time. Give so him if you a need shout help, out. feel free to message me. Absolutely. And that is his channel right there. Definitely a great, great streamer. He is somebody I have followed. He's been one of my buddies for a long time. Definitely. Good times indeed. It was more known as the Hunt for J items or a Black Sword Early. Yeah, I would say that yeah. that kind of does describe it, doesn't it, Cecil? <laughs> it it can it can definitely do that because you start off with the Dark Knight and oh man, if you have like all stuff and ordeals that could that could easily I mulligan actually, your seed. Yesterday or maybe yesterday or something, I did do a kind of special percent and oh, completed it. Lovely. <laughs> oh man, that that just sounds crazy. So anyway, yeah, moving I on. It and it's beatable. Absolutely. So moving I on. I um, put J items on, and I turned Y on. All right, all right, see, so that's fine. Well, we'll 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 discuss that later. Yeah. So anyway, okay. moving on. Um, we have um, T Wild. What that means is treasures can pretty much have anything in them, from adamant armor to like plain clothes or crap or gold or whatever. That is your treasure flag. You can actually set that. You can customize it. You can make the seed as easy or as hard as you want to, depending on what you want in your treasures. The S flag is the S standard. We talked a little bit about that earlier, um, but that is what is in your shops. You can also uh, disallow J items if you want to in either of those flags, but that just tells you what items you will get in your shops as well. Now the boss flag, the B flag, that is um, a very interesting flag. That's that's what kind of defines the free enterprise randomizer quite a bit. The the, the, the biggest thing in version 4.0 of free enterprise is we also have what's called the alternate gauntlet flag set. What that means is if you encounter the foul gauntlet as one of your ra uh, random bosses, it'll actually be a bunch of encounters from the nearby area versus the actual Fable Gauntlet scaled up. So you'd be fighting a bunch of unscaled monsters instead. So, there you go. And yeah, the alternate Gauntlet at Ogopogo, as Lord Goober says, is probably one of the worst possible locations you can get because it has like a bunch of red dragons, Evil mass, behemoths, God knows what else. <laughs> exactly. So that's what that's what that's what makes version 4.0 a bit more unique because they added that version. Very interesting. Um, now the witch burn. That's a flag that I always like to run. That that turns um, Wyvern's mega nuke opening onto onto a random attack. Could be anything from. Virus to Big Bang to you know Whisper or whatever you know. Oh, thank you, Dragon Slayer. I appreciate that. You're awesome too, buddy. <laughs> I saw it during the uh, Swiss round of the Fable Gauntlet tournament, and it was required in that scene. Oh, that just sounds nasty. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. And here we go. And hello there, Tamoxi. Thank you so much for that raid. I appreciate that. Welcome to Low Roll. Great to have you guys here tonight. Let's give you a nice little shout out there. Great to have you. Absolutely. What were you uh, playing? Playing some Shenmue. Nice. Good times indeed. And how's it going, Guybrush? Good to have you here tonight. We are... Doing, doing a tutorial. Reading a percent 101. Um, I'm just getting through like the explanation of all the flags here. Some of the differences in version 3 versus version 4.0. So that's what we're doing right now. And then we'll get the seed started. If you guys would like to uh, play this seed along with me, you guys can. 
it is in my Discord, or I will just copy and paste it right here. There it is right there. If you all are doing well and staying safe, yes we are, absolutely. We are all have to stay safe in this wonderful world that we live in, don't we guys? <laughs> so there is the there is the seed that I am playing. Here are the flags that I am playing here. They are a little bit more relaxed than my typical flag set because this is more of a tutorial seed. So definitely good times indeed. And Jeff Yard, thank you so much for that host. I appreciate that. Great times indeed. And if you guys have any questions or answers, please let me know. I will stop. I will say, well, hey, you know, there you go. That this this, this is this. It's like, you know, what well what's this in flag mean? What does that mean? Well, you know what that means? That's the no free lunch flag. The no free characters flag means you are not gonna get characters anywhere that you could just pick straight up, such as you know, Damkayan, Mount Ordeals, or down in Mycidia, or in the watery pass. So those are your four free locations. You will not get any extra characters there. So we have to actually hunt for our videos the hard way. And now, no free key item. That means you have to hunt for D-Mist instead of getting uh, Edward. So that pretty much is the same in the old version. Nothing has changed there. Now the E-Flag, those are your encounters. You can toggle them on. You can toggle them off. It really depends on what you, you prefer. But usually, this is the most common flag here. Is you toggle the encounters on or off. Now, the G flag. The life glitch typically is one of the, the most popular flags that a lot of people turn on. What that means is you can use life one or a life staff or a life potion on a monster as it is fading out to gain double EXP from it. So that is what the life glitch is. Now I've also included the warp glitch. And the warp glitch is kind of significant in Iridia Percent because that also allows you to skip sealed cave and you can actually um, get the item in that location where the dark crystal would normally be by casting warp right after you complete the dwarf castle and grow Iridia up. So it gives you a little bit of an incentive to go ahead and do Dwarf Castle because that, that makes Rydia into an adult. And as we as we do that, I will show you what exactly happens when Rydia becomes an adult. There is quite a bit of an advantage and quite a bit of disadvantage as well too. So, with that being said, the last flag is a spoiler flag. Now what that means is, is that there will be a text file generated in case anybody gets stuck or anything like that. You can look at the spoiler log and you can see exactly, well, where the heck is the magma key? Where's the tower key? Oh, that's where they are and stuff like that. So if you are just playing this casually, you don't care about like, you know, your time or your races or stuff like that, it's a really good tool. And some people use the spoiler log open to just route a race and run it as fast as they can. That's what's called a router's relish. That is not something we do here. We just we just like to do video percent straight up. And the only reason I have this is for you guys. So that way you guys can take a look at it and you can see as I run the seed where everything is. So with that being said, um, I think we are about ready to go with this. Now, I'm not going to explain what all this this means. This is all the same stuff, you know. We have um, the music you can turn on or off. Like, if you're playing some music, you can turn it off. You can change the window color. Battle speed, that's probably the most important one there, as well as the encounters. Battle message, usually people leave it on one. But as we actually go along in the seed, I will show you guys what happens. So, I think we are ready to start this. So... If you guys want, uh, please please feel free to start up right now. So here we go. So as we start, uh, we are coming out of the Baron Castle here. You get one key item at the very beginning. Let's see what it is. And it is the hook. 
Now, that could be very, very useful, or very, 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 very trolly. Which means this could be a hook seed. And that is one of the two ways that you can actually get to the underworld. <laughs> so here we go, Ridia 101. And as we uh, ascend here, we are going to get our random objective. So let's see what it is. Runs for this objective are Conquer the Vanilla Ribbon Room. Now that means we have to go up to the D-Lunar spot and defeat the D-Lunar boss there. Whatever is there. To win the crystal. So that is an actually a very difficult objective. And that is in addition to just being able to get up there. Now, as you guys can see right here, here is our party of radios. Immediately go straight here to change. Put them in the back row. Because you don't want them to get hurt. And save. And there you go. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go into Baron here. Now, the first item that you can get is right over here. That is a black belt. That is something that Rydia can use. Gives us a little bit more information if you press uh, select. So, like, right now, you can see all the people that can use it. And you can also see what kind of stats happen with it. You know, how much more defense you get, evade, magic defense, etc. So, obviously, you know that the black belt is better than the leather because it's got better stats. So there you go. Yeah, it would be would be great if the magma key placement is trade trade for rat tail since you uh, get hook at start. Yeah, exactly. And if we get a, if we get a rat tail, you could trade the rat tail in for a key item. And if that key item is the magma key, that means you do not have to go hook cave. So we're gonna go into the Baron Inn here. There are a few uh, items here. There is a Drain Spear. That is not useful. Now you just want to face that sword there. Get these items here. We have an Archer Bow, which is slightly useful. And it looks like we have French Vanilla or Vanilla Guards there. Now you don't want to talk to this video here because that will initiate the, the Town of Baron battle. But you do want to remember for that that for later. So we're just going to go straight back out here. Yep, yeah, so yeah, that, it, that looks like it is a vanilla guard boss. Exactly, Kayla. Yeah, definitely. And how's it going, 46? Welcome back to Low Roll. Great to have you. There's 300 gold here in the pot in the bottom there. Now let's go inside Rosa's house. On her shelf here, we have... Um, some gold and in the back we got a Bacchus wine that casts berserk now if you're never sure what any of this any of these items do you can just press select combat item berserks the user unihorn combat items remove sleep curse paralyze and berserk from all party members so that's what that does and there's a drain spear only Kane can use it so obviously it's gonna be merchant food for us all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and go down into the waterfall, like so. Get the archer bow and get 240 gold. And if you guys would like to follow along with the seed, there it is right there. So there are two items there that are hidden in there. So now we are going to make our way back up, go through here. Go to the trees this way and just go ahead and loop three items there's one there that's another drain spear 100 gold and a vampire and now that is about it so now the next thing i do is i go straight back into baron here and this is the only shop that you have open the weapon shops that are over here are locked you have to have the Baron key to get in there, so you cannot actually check that until later. So here's the item shop. Go ahead and talk to the guy. Now, it looks like we have two items here that we are definitely going to need for later. The Silk Web is a combat item that slows all enemies. You definitely want to have that item because it 
will nerf Zeromus's agility significantly. Starveil, that casts wall on the user, you definitely want to have that as well too because you can bounce spells off of Rydia and do reflect strats. So we are going to sell the stuff that we don't need. I don't really care too much about the archer bows. You can have them if you want to, but I don't think we need them. So I am going to buy like one silk web and two star veils. We don't have a whole lot of money yet. Now I'm going to go into my item menu. We're going to go straight down to here. Go to the sort. Bring it all the way back up. Double click that sort. And there you go. You have all your items pretty much sorted out there. So that's just a way of actually keeping track of, of your items a little bit better there. And yes, bows are only useful if you need to fight stuff like Valvulus or if you don't have anything else. So now we are going to take the airship. And now the, the first thing that I always like to do is I like to loot. So we're going to go here into Mist Town. Which is Rydia's hometown, of course. You have to go into Mist Town. Or else, otherwise, your Rydia percent is not valid. And look at what we found. That is a Leviathan. That is one of the best items that you can get for Rydia. So let's go ahead and learn Leviathan. And you know what? When you learn one of them, you learn it on all five of them so it's not just her that knows how to use it it'll be her as well too now it costs 50 mp so you can't really use it at level one so or if you want to use artemis arrows to kill a dragon boss early on yes that is a good point kayla excellent point point. and there is a samurai bow there are two items here you just go straight into the back there and now we're going to go ahead and sell that Samurai. We don't need that. That gives us 10,000. And there's nothing here that we can actually buy. So, so and if you're wondering what what Trogdor. can do, yeah. Oh, yes, and Trogdor, yes. That is the Verninator. We have not yet found him yet. He is, he is, the, he is Bahamut. He is the best summon in the game. So, you, you guys can see the only thing we can buy is a prisoner, but why would you want to buy that? That's really bad armor. Now, let's go check the weapons here. Now, the weapons, usually I look for rods, or sometimes some daggers. That gives us wisdom plus three, but that's not really something that I would buy. Because it's a very low-end item. But you can buy it if you want to. It's just really up to your preference. So now we're going to go into Rydia's house. In the bag here, there are four chests. There are three right here. Got some Dragoon equipment that is more merchant food. And in the very back there is a white spear. Now, if we had a cane, that would be really awesome. But nope, that is really good merchant food for us. So, And that's the thing you always want to do at the very beginning is you want to just loot. You want to get a bunch of gold. <laughs> Absolute lie. All right, now I'm gonna run over here to Kaipo. Let's see what's over here. Now you won't get the cutscene until you do the package, so just so you have that. This one pot up here has an item, which is an hourglass one in our seed. <laughs> and what do we got here? There is a mute knife that is a plus five item. That is something you definitely want to get. So we're going to go ahead and sell some of our stuff here. We'll go ahead and buy two of those Mute Knives. And equip them with our Rydias here. Because the Rod, as you guys can see, doesn't have like any wis Wisdom bonus. The Mute Knife has Wisdom plus 5. Also inflicts Mute, but is also strong against Mage types. So if you want to attack with it, it can actually do a little bit more damage to any Mage type creatures such as Mad Ogres or the Magus Sisters. Or even a Sura herself. So those are some item, some things to keep in mind. Is you have certain items that, that are good against certain monsters. Kaipo, remember to go here because there are shops. Yes, you always want to remember to go here. Weapon shop, armor shop, exactly. 
No longer got a clean copy of your uh, FF2 SMC. Okay, uh, 46. Um, we can definitely take care of that. So uh, just let me know. Let me know, DM, if you're still having trouble with the seed. Okay, we can definitely take care of that. Um, now here is one of the best rings you can buy in the game for Ridia. That is the Rune Ring. It gives you Wisdom and Will plus plus five. Prevents her from being silenced and also re resists Mage type enemies. So we're gonna buy two of those and let's go ahead and equip those on Ridia there. Notice they're much better than the Iron Ring. So, that is a really nice ring offensively wise. If you get that, make sure that you equip it because it is one of the best rings in the game that you can get for her. The only ones that would be better would be the Crystal Ring and the Protect Ring. Alright, now here's the item shop which is inside the uh, inn in Kaipo here. Summer Drops are nice but they're a bit expensive. We're not going to grab anything from there. There are Thor Rages there. You may want to come back and get those if you have trouble with certain bosses. But I usually don't bother with them because Rydia will get lit one. So, we are going to go back to our airship here. And there we go. Uh, so, let's go ahead and uh, land here. Now this is what I like to f refer to as Pepper Castle. Make sure you save your game. That way you don't lose any of your progress. Now take one step down and then take a few steps over here and then go one few steps up and around through here. This is the back entrance to Damkayan. And you, you push that button, you go in here, you go down here, Grab that. There is a tiara that is one of the best helmets for Rydia right there. The reason why that is, is because it has Wisdom plus 10. Also resists lightning damage and dragons as well too, so that is why it is one of the better helms that you can get in the game for Rydia. So, equip that right away. She will be doing a heck of a lot more magic damage. And that stacks with this plus three right here and that plus five. So she now has plus 18 wisdom. 26. Crazy, isn't that? So that is a really high wisdom stat right there. That is the stat that you want to be improving on your Rydias to be able to have them do a lot of magic damage. All right, so now let's go ahead and loot a bunch of this stuff here. Hourglass one found a bunch of junk here found a wizard helmet, which is slightly better than what you have for this video Maybe on my end, but you are skipping forward in increments. Let me test. It's linear at source. Okay Okay, I just want to make sure that if, if I have any uh, stream troubles, please let me know guys uh, That is very much appreciated Let's see here so, yeah, you can see it's slightly better, but it only gives will. It doesn't give wisdom. Alright, so, now I can just go straight outside here, go straight back in, and there we go. And what else do we have up here? There is one more item there. That is a protect ring. That is slightly better than a rune ring. So you can equip that if you want to at the very beginning here, like that. And there you go. Hey there, how's it going, Ranch? Good to have you. Big hugs. And Ethero. Stream looks fine. Awesome. I appreciate that. Great to have you here. And if anybody would like to uh, play along with me, there is the seed right there. Absolutely. How are we today? We are doing awesome. Tifa, sorry I was late. I was dealing with a family situation. It is all right. It is great to have you here, Jenica. It is great to have you. Awesome. So we are pretty much in the middle of this seat. Well, not quite the middle. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And if you want to play along with this scene, there it is right there. Um, I also suggest that you load up your tracker if you have one already. There, that is definitely something you want to do. Absolutely. And if anybody would like to uh, join uh, my Discord in voice chat for any sort of questions and answers, you guys can. They'll be answered straight on stream so you guys can watch that later at any time at all. Alright, so there is the hovercraft. We can pick it up because we have the hook now. We actually started with the hook. And one thing I'm, I'll just let you guys know stuff for those of you who just came in. Um, I got some mute knives from uh, the shop in Kaipo. Those give you re wisdom plus 5. I found a tiara in the castle that gives you windows, wisdom plus 10. That is really, really good for your radio. Fan of Black Belt and Baron. Not that great, but it's better than leather armor. Found a protect ring inside Pepper Castle. That gives you a bit more defense there. That is stuff that you can actually do. Happy Sunday? Absolutely, guys. And I also got a wizard helmet and a rune. A rune ring, definitely the best offensive item that you want to have for your radios. Alright, so let's go ahead and take off here we are now going to be heading over this way into Troya now again the emphasis on the very beginning of a radio percent is always making sure that you have enough cash to get all your stuff so we are going to go ahead and go inside the Troya um, treasury here and loot the living heck out of it yeah, it's definitely something good to know about the Rune Ring because it is the only ring in the game that actually gives you plus, five, plus three to Wisdom. And there is a Moon Veil. That is a very good item that allows you to be reflected but also increases your evade tremendously. So that you will never get hit by physical attacks. Let's go ahead and grab some stuff here. There is a crystal sword and an edge of shield. That is more merchant food. A defense sword and an avenger. Now, if we had a Cecil here, he would be really, really good. But this is all merchant food for us, guys. So this is why you want to loot quite a bit. Good times indeed. Alright, so there is our loot. Let's go into Troya. We are going to check... Both shops, remember there are two shops in Troya here. First one is this one right here. It has, looks like it's got cabins and cure twos. We are definitely going to want those. So we're going to start clearing out our inventory. Because we don't want like any of this crap that we cannot use. Hermes, I usually don't even bother with those. So just sell those. Sell the Age of Shield. You don't need that. You don't need this. This is all merchant food that... We, Rydia cannot even use. Unihorn, I am selling that. That is also junk. Um, cabins, typically I buy 20 of them. Cure 2s, buy 50 of them. Could never have enough Cure 2s. Absolutely. And then go back into your item menu, sort it out, put your cabins and your uh, stuff up here. Now that way they're a little bit easier to access. And there we go. Now we're going to go into the second shop here. And there are some Ether 1s. You want, I would say, try to get 50 if you can. But if you can't afford them, then you get like 30 or 20 or however many you can afford. So yeah, Ether 1s are really good for Rydia here. We're going to put those up here as well too. There you go. Absolutely. You can get away with 10 cabins, but it's nice to have 20 if it's a 17 out of 17 C. Yeah, usually that's about it. Sure love those 17 out of 17s? Absolutely, don't we, guys? <laughs> and now let's take a look at this armor shop. Now, there is a Gaia helmet there. That is a very good helmet for Rydia because it gives her wisdom plus 3 and will plus 3 as well, too. And there is a cursed ring, 
You can buy a curse ring if you want to. I I might as well do it. We're gonna buy a few guy helmets. There you go. And what does 17 out of 17 mean? Excellent question. The thing is, in your free enterprise randomizer, there are 17 key items total possible in every seed that you can get. If you get every single key item, that is considered to be a 17 out of 17 seed. So it's 100% pretty much. Yep, that's, that's exactly what that means. A 17 out of 17 seed usually is one that lasts really freaking long because you got to kill every single boss location to get every single item. <laughs> Excellent question. Um, and it looks like we have this. Notice that the Ice Rod does not actually give you Wisdom plus 3, so don't even bother buying it. So, that's one thing to note, is you do not have, if you do not have, like, anything that has plus 5, don't even bother with it. Alright, so now we're going to go into the water here. Sometimes I don't do this, sometimes I do. So we are going to go into the back here. We are going to go ahead and get four items here. There is a sorcerer robe that is a very good robe for Rydia there and a black robe. Okay, so now that we have those, that black belt is not going to really serve us too much purpose. But look at that sorcerer robe. That has wisdom and will plus five. Resist lightning damage and undead. One of, it's one of the best armors in the game for Rydia next to adamant armor. So equip that right away. One of the best armors you can get. Now this other Rydia only had a leather. So obviously we know that a black shirt is better than a uh, leather shirt. And notice that a black shirt actually does not give you wisdom. It only gives you will. That is something that is inherent in this game. You do not get... Wisdom plus 5. You get Will plus 5. But it's still better than what you had. So so don't go out of your way to buy black shirts versus sorcerer robes. The sorcerer robes are much better than your black shirts. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Alrighty. Now, we have sufficient enough items and equipment start doing quite a bit of stuff so yeah well super nest resolution is close to 240 you can see the game just fine on 360 yeah it sounds about right now the first thing that i always do in Ridia percents is land on the west side of hobbs the nice thing about the flags that set that i'm running here which you guys can see are right here if you guys want to generate a seed with this tutorial flag set on your own, there it is right there. But if you go straight up here, you get a, you get a summon. But unfortunately, look what summon it is. Oh, and that is the worst summon that you can get. Yes, you get a random summon here, but... The Imp is one of the worst summons that you can get for Rydia. Oh my gosh, that is, that is bad. <laughs> so that's what makes the randomizer fun. You never know what kind of summon you're going to get until you actually go there. So <laughs> and there is a curse ring and a glass helmet. Good stuff to have. So let's go ahead and save our game like that and there we go it costs one mp but it'll pretty much always do one damage so if you want to do one damage for any godforsaken reason to any enemy let's say you want to masochistically kill zeromus with imp go right ahead you will we'll be sitting here until i have a full beard of gray hair. <laughs> okay. Now, up here is... It looks like either Rubik Conte or Elements. Do we have... 
Cure 3. No, we do not. Well, not something I want to risk just yet. But that is a possible place where you can get your third Rydia. So let's go ahead and go straight down. All right. But you cannot get Leviathan or Bahamut. You can get anything else up to Odin. Exactly, from the Random Summon. Good, good point, Kayla. Absolutely great point to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to Fabul. Let's see if we can find some good stuff here. And hey, how is it going, the yes, Badger? Welcome to the Radio Percent tutorial. Great to have you here tonight. Let's see what kind of weapons and armor we have. Now the Elven Bow. The Elven Bow is a really good weapon to have. What this does is it allows you to have Wisdom plus 5, and it's also strong against mages and flying enemies, but the plus 5 basically lets you be a hybrid Rydia attacker or a caster. So that's why I bought two of those. Now you also have to have some arrows with them. It doesn't matter what arrows you have, as long as you have them equipped. Now, in the Mute Knife, they already have plus five, but you can see you could do this as well, too. So, that's another way of getting plus five wisdom on Rydia, is to get your Elven Bow there. So, there you go, guys. Great to be here. Awesome. Heck yeah, it's great to have you guys here tonight. All right. So, we are going to go check out the item shop here and looks like there's some vampires there you might buy some of those if you need any like sort of items bombs are not that great so looks like that shop really bombed on us <laughs> bad joke hashtag alright so go ahead and save and yes another, another great uh, point to make is you always want to put the arrows in the dominant hand. In Rydia's case, it is always going to be the arrows in your right hand. And the bow goes in your off hand, which is your left hand. Absolutely. So, now that I have enough money, I'm going to go ahead and just start doing my shopping trip here. So, you get an item there. The bandana. That is a really good item if you want to actually go physical on Rydia. And there's samurai and a ninja. More merchant food. So definitely good stuff that you can just sell straight up. So we're going to go ahead and sell this. Can't use an earth. Can't use that. We'll keep those for now. Sell that. And that. And there you go. We're going to keep the glass helmet for now. The nice thing about the glass helmet is it has the highest physical defense in the game. But the magic defense is absolutely zero, so you want to keep that in mind as well, too. All right. And we got some illusions here. You can buy those if you want to. I usually don't bother buying them, but sometimes they can be useful. So I just went ahead and bought ten of them. All right. So we are going to go ahead and exit here. I'm going to go to the next shop. Now notice I do all this just to prepare. Because you want to make sure that you have enough items to be able to take on the particular dungeons that are in this game that can be very nasty with the bosses. So, especially because Rydia is only level 1 and part of the fun is getting past level 1. Okay, life potions, buy 50 of them. They're very cheap. You can even buy even more if you want to. Either twos, I wouldn't bother buying them unless you can really afford them. So there is my Sidia's item shop. And what do we get for the armor here? Now there are some black shirts here. You can buy some of those. I'll go ahead and buy two just because I can. I'm going to go ahead and sort my items there just in case. And the reason I'm buying those is for the later radios in the game that I don't have just yet. Exactly. Rydia's health gains are relatively slow compared to the other characters, so if you run into a strong physical boss, 
you want to be able to swap to a high physical defense. Yeah, so like if you fight uh, something at the Bahamut spot that deals a lot of physical damage, you definitely want to make sure you have that glass helmet to be able to, to at least weather some of that. So yeah, great point to make. Yeah, so you always want to keep your glass helmet, your heroin robe, and of course you never get rid of your Ottoman armor, because who would ever get rid of that? <laughs> Alright, so, now we're going to go straight to the left here, and just a bit down, there is Agar, right there. And let's go ahead and check the items here. Definitely good times. And that's also where illusions can come in handy, as well as moon veils. The moon veils and the illusions are two of the best items that you can get. And there are Cure Threes. Now, they are a bit expensive. However, I will go ahead and buy 20 of them. Cure Threes are very, very useful, especially towards the end game and the Z fights. So let's go ahead and look at our armor shop here. Doesn't look like we have anything useful except for a bandana. If you want to want to come back for that, that's fine, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now notice I'm no longer going into the weapon shops because I've already found my plus five weapons. The fact that I have the standard shop flags on usually means that you'll only be able to find plus five wisdom items. So that is why I am skipping out on the other shops. Now, the, the shops that are unlockable, such as with the Baron Key, or the Underworld, or the Moon, or the Hook, those shops actually might have better items because they are gated. Now, I'm coming back here to Baron now that I have more money, and we are going to go ahead and grab our two very critical items that we need in the seed. Silk Webs, Star Veils. Make sure you get at least 10 of those, if not more Star Veils. In fact, I'm probably going to get 20 of those. So let's go ahead and sell the black belt there. So that way I have 30,000. So there, 20 star veils. It can never hurt to have enough of those because you have to bounce magic off onto a boss that counters or anything like that. He won't counter. <laughs> so yeah. Really isn't any, any uh, real keep over other items except the adamant armors and the dragon whip with the good good all-around radios? Exactly. Oh, you mean like samurai... You kept samurai bows? Exactly. I mean, samurai bows and arrows are also pretty good. Make sure you stay hydrated as well, too. Cheers to you guys for being here tonight. All right. Now that we've done all of our shopping, we are ready to go into our first dungeon. The first dungeon that I always recommend everybody goes into, Antline. So, I don't save outside here. I just go ahead and go straight straight on in. Loot everything that you can. And after you loot everything you can in here, reassess your situation. Like, there we found a Charm Rod. A Charm Rod is the second most powerful rod in the game it has plus 10 to wisdom and if used as an item to cast charm but not a whole lot of people will use that because you're just fighting bosses that are immune to charm so yeah we're gonna equip that because it has plus 10 to wisdom gives Aridia a little bit more punching power with her magic that is not with her fists <laughs> And there is a samurai arrow there. Some gold. There we go. And about a, as many as, as you could, could find. Awesome, dude. Awesome, 46. And there is a slumber sword right there. An archer bow. That is not that great. You can already buy elven bows, which are, are better than your archer bows. So that's why I just go ahead and sell those. And what do we got here? A crystal glove that is more merchant food. 320 golds. Right now we are going to go up and into here. And let's go ahead and see what we got here. A sorcerer robe, a heroine robe. Those are really good items to have right now. So let's go ahead and immediately equip that sorcerer robe for that plus five to wisdom and will. 
as well as the other stuff too. But the most, the most important thing is to just make sure that you have your wisdom as high as you can, because the best defense against these uh, enemies is a really good offense. So here's where you, where you want to do your save. There's that line right there. So that is the first save that you will get before actually fighting a boss and having to reset. So now we are going to go ahead and go straight down into the lion's den itself and see what we are fighting. And it looks like Mylon or Mylon Z. And how's it going, Moa? Good to have you here tonight. And it looks like Mylon. Okay. Now, now what you can do with Mylon here, if you have an hourglass, you can paralyze the zombies if you want to. Now, we do not have a whole lot of offensive capability, so I highly recommend that you do that. And now the only summons that we have are Chocobo and Imp. You can summon a Chocobo onto Mylon himself there, if you want to. That will definitely give him a little bit of damage. But I'm going to go ahead and use a Vampire on him. He will always counter with a lit one, so you be able to be careful about that. And there he goes. Oh my body! He is now bye-bye. <laughs> Alright, so there we go, and now that the only thing that is left is your zombies, we're going to use what's called Holy Water Strats, use a few Cure 2s on them, and they will pretty much go straight down. So that is why I buy Cure 2s, because not only can they be used as curative items, they can also harm undead. So there you go, guys. So that is how you would deal with this boss at this spot. It is not a very strong boss, so there you go. We are now outside of the level one hole. That is the first step into actually getting your videos stronger, is to get them out of level one. Forgot to start your timer. Eh, that's all good. And we have the pass. Oh, be quiet, Gandalf. We should pass. We already found the pass. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. So, they, as you guys know, the pass allows you to get to Zeromus much earlier than you would if you went to go up to the moon. Now, you can go straight to Z right now and go ahead and fight him, but you ain't going to be able to do any damage to him because you don't have the crystal. Exactly, right? Yeah, let's just go Leeway and straight into Z. Exactly, right? Nah. <laughs> All right. So that is Antlion done. Make sure you mark that on your tracker if you guys have that right there. Now, I am using uh, Big Duncan's tracker. If you guys use Skull Kitty's tracker, you, you won't have this option. So I highly recommend that everybody use this one if you are learning how to play quite a bit of different unique flag sets. So now... Second area that I go to is Fabul here. So what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and go straight up. And we are going to defend the castle. So this is going to be our second boss. So we will see exactly what we are dealing with here. It may be possible, it may require a bit of grinding, it might might actually require us to go somewhere else. And it looks like we got the other Mylon. Fall flat into the deep ravine. Well, fortunately, since we have Cure 3s, he's going to fall flat onto his ass pretty much easily, because Cure 3s will hurt him quite a bit. And look at that. That is one of the easiest fights that you could actually have if, in Iridia Percent if you have a bunch of curative items like that. So yeah, a lot of the times in the very early game, your, your attacks, they're going to be very much dependent on what kind of items you get. So that is why I always go to your shops, you always sell your stuff that you don't need, you get the stuff that you do need, and then you go kill the bosses. And a Dragoon Spear... Unfortunately, that doesn't give us anything but merchant food. 
Alright, so we are going to go ahead and loot the rest of this place here. This is Sheila's Tower. There's only one item here. There it is right there. And th the three chests. Again, more merchant food. Nothing, anything exciting. Now you can also go back to the throne room here if you want to. Some people choose not to. Sometimes I, I do it, sometimes I don't. And make sure you push the button there, go down, go to the right, grab your items, defense sword, more merchant food, nothing too fancy in here, just a bunch more merchant food. Now that our radios are a little bit higher in level, we have now broken the threshold of 50 MP. They now have 83 and 84 MP which means they are now going to be doing Leviathons. So now you guys can see how Rydia can be very, very powerful as soon as you get out of that quote-unquote hole that is level 1. So first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go get that third Rydia up here. We're going to go ahead and save beforehand. Because we know that this is either going to be Elements, or it's going to be Rubicante, as we saw as we were here previously. So let's go ahead and fight that. We get our third Rydia right off the bat. And it looks like it is Elements, so nice thing about that, use a Cure 3 and he's dead. <laughs> so that is one of the easier fights that you can fight on Hobbs. Use a cure three and say goodbye. <laughs> now, if we did, if it was a different fight, then I would go ahead and show off Leviathan. Now we have three Ridias. Make sure that as soon as you get your third Ridia there, give her the stuff that she needs. So we're gonna go ahead and equip her with some uh, bows and arrows here. Uh, do we have any helmets there? Yes, we do. You can either give her a glass helmet or a guy helmet. I'll go ahead and give her the glass helmet just to be, just because I'm special. We'll go ahead and give her a black robe and a rune ring. So there we go. So now we're going to descend the mountain here and we are going to go to the next spot. So now. Fabul is done. Antlion is done. What is left on the table? Tanabaron. Now you can go straight to Hook if you want to right now, but I highly do not recommend it because you definitely want to get your fourth Radia first. Now let's go ahead and use a cabin here because you do not get healed after Hobbs, so you always want to make sure that you... Uh, heal up because if you don't then you may not be able to cast Leviathan. Alright, so we know that there are the Vanilla Baron Guards here. They're not going to be too much of a threat, but we will go ahead and attack them. So it's not necessarily this fight that you want to worry about here. It's the next fight that you do. So, and again, if you guys have any questions, please make sure that you stop me because um, the thing is, is it takes a bit of a learning curve to learn where all this stuff is. So, again, feel free to stop and a stop me and ask any questions that you might have as I am doing this scene. So, there goes the Kraken. Release the Kraken. And look at how much damage that does. Now, I want to be careful because now that that Rydia has used Leviathan, won't be able to use it again because we didn't have like 100 MP, so. And now, Dark Elf can be a little bit of a troll here. This is the second boss. It has a lot more HP than the first boss does, so. Let's see what we want to do first. Let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and slow him down a bit. We're going to use Leviathan as our second move here. 
And then with the third Rydia, we're going to go ahead and start restoring our, our mana with our Ether. That way we can use another Leviathan once her turn actually queues up. Uh, what happened to my points layout? I have currently uh, disabled that because this is a tutorial. There we go. There's our a. There, there is our Leviathan right there. So yeah, what, once we, once I start doing some of those again, that that's when I when I just do my regular streams. But because this is a tutorial, we will have we'll have those re-enabled later on. And look at that, there is Adamant. So that gives us another item, two out of 17. The only thing that really does is help uh, unlock uh, the Excalibur Sword and the Cocoa Shop, which could have some good items. So just keep that in mind. But more importantly, we now have a fourth Rydia. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Like, so, so those of you guys who are my regulars here, you guys can can do that, but just not now that we're doing the tutorial. So yeah, don't worry about that. That that will still be a thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip this Rydia. Now I can give her a curse ring if I want to, and make her an agility anchor. We might as well do that because that will definitely help out a bit of our boss fight. So I throw her in the middle there. At level 1, she's not going to be doing much of anything other than anchoring. So there you go. So go ahead and save. And now, now let's go ahead and do Mount Ordeals. Because this is a hook seat, usually I will always make sure that I exhaust every single option before I decide to go hook. So Mount Ordeals does give us a bit more experience. Now another thing you can do... Well actually, you know what I will do? Let me just do this to illustrate a point. Before we go to Mount Ordeals, I am going to actually go to Avalon Cave just to illustrate a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to uh, Pepper Castle and grab our hovercraft here. There it is right there. And we're going to head over to Avalon. Yes, I will explain anchoring when I have a chance. Exactly, Nike. So, the thing is, um, with anchoring, um, you have, like, one of your characters in the very middle here. You want her to have, like, the lowest agility and stats possible. Because um, that will basically give, like, all of your other radios a heck of a lot more uh, turns. So that's what anchoring usually does. Is it, is it cycles through all the other radios here. Now here is Evalon Castle. This is an optional area. You can go in here if you want to actually get some more loot and fight some more monsters. We will be doing that just a bit later. But first, we're going to use the hovercraft to go into the cave. So here is the cave. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a straight beeline do not open any chests because you may not be prepared for the stalemen fight. That is the only fight that you have to deal with in here. Plus, we can also look at the weapon and armor shops. The only thing that's possibly here is a ruby ring. Not that great. Anything here? Nope. Nothing there. But yeah, in short, anchoring just usually means... You put your third character at your lowest agility, you, you put all your uh, high agility characters everywhere else, and they go faster. That's probably the, the gist of it. Now there is Odin right there. That will give us Odin on all of our videos. So we are going to go ahead and sell some of our stuff if we can to afford that Odin. Because that could actually be very useful in this seed. We'll go ahead and sell all that. Notice I sold the Blitz Whip too. The thing about Rydia is, is her whips will not give you any magic power at all. You always want to make sure that you make note of that. Because your whips are only for your physical attacks. They are not 
for your magic. Especially the flame and the dragon whip because they actually decrease your wisdom stats. So just make note of that. That is the reason why I had sold the blitz whip. Now usually I will keep the flame and the dragon whip because you might actually have useful for them. So let's go ahead and buy our Odin there. Now, as of course, as you use the Leviathan beforehand, if you use the Odin, it gets Odin on all your Ridias. So there you go. Now, every single Ridia now has the ability to cast Odin. Really nice. So that is why I always check some of these shops, because you can have really good summons. Now, I did not mean to open that chest. That is a risk. Do not do that. <laughs> what I am going to do is I'm just going to go straight to the back. Now, the reason why is I want to go ahead and grab this fifth Rydia. And once we get that fifth Rydia, we can actually start leveling her up. And it looks like Dr. Luage is going to be the hook boss at the Rubicante spot. Okay, so he is doable. He is not going to be that difficult. Stay hydrated, people. Good times indeed. So there is our fifth and final Rydia. Now, of course, you can always swap out your Rydias for other color Rydias if you want to. If you have, like, a fashion sense, of course, you probably want to have the really good-looking Rydias. You see I have the top nine of them just to the left of me, right there, that I like to use. Now, that being said, you know, it doesn't always turn out that way. If you're playing seeds and stuff like that, don't expect your radios to actually come out the way you want them. Sadly. And of course, my friend Baba's, he loves Terra Radio. We're just going to equip this Radio here. Let's see what we got for her. A Mute Knife. There we go. Is there a bad Radio? No, there is not. I do not believe there is. Every Radio is awesome. Especially here in Low Roll. Absolutely. All right, so there we go. Go ahead and save. Good Rodia is Terra Rodia. There you go. <laughs> right through. How's it going, Cecil? Great to have you. I was uh, eating. Awesome, awesome. So what we are doing now is we are in Eblon Cave. I'm not sure if you have the stream up right now. And there is an adamant armor that is one of the best armors in the game. The best armor in the game, actually. So we are going to go ahead and equip that on that radia. Booyah! That radia is now going to be invincible! <laughs> and this is where you laugh maniacally! No. <laughs> and there is a dancing knife. You gotta stream up. Pretty much, yeah. And there is a Tiara. Let's go ahead and also equip that on that radio there. She is going to be a power house. Because not only does that adamant armor have such a high defense and magic defense, it gives you plus 15 to every stat, including wisdom. So that radio is going to pretty much own everything. That Rydia can actually probably do this seed solo now. <laughs> so you guys will see yeah. that sometimes when I do some of my seeds. And there is the trap chest that I was looking for. If you have Hourglass, use it immediately. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Leviathan to prove a point. And watch how much damage this Rydia is going to do. Four thousand damage! Heck yeah! On such a low level, that's quite a bit. And this gives us a heck of a lot of EXP to all of our radios here. 
Now, you may be thinking, well, maybe I don't want to go back to ordeals. You can go back to ordeals if you want to, or you can choose not to go back to ordeals. Social percent, it is mandatory, though. Absolutely. And there is an Artemis bow. We are taking that. That is another item there that you can actually use on Rydia that can boost her agility by 10, but it also decreases our wisdom too, so you gotta be careful with that as well. So let me just show you what the Artemis bow does. So if you look at it very closely here, where is it? There it is right there. Strength, agility, and vitality plus 10. However, wisdom and will minus 10. Strong against flying enemies. Now, contrary to its popular belief, it is not strong against dragons. The Artemis arrows, however, are strong against dragons. So that is why you want to be careful sometimes with the Artemis spell. Use it for your agility manipulation or for killing someone like Valvalis, which could be quite a troll. All right, so we're just going to head forward and we are going to head through Upper Babel here. The fact that I had found that adamant armor pretty much significantly changed my routing. It, it definitely is something that you want to do. Yeah, see, another thing is you have to be aware of um, defense ignoring attacks, exactly as Kayla says, such as Kinazo's Wave, Dark Knight's Wave, Virus Spell, uh, Plague's uh, Count is not immune. You're not immune to that either. Um, and Dr. Luage's laser beam. Yeah, that, that deals uh, HP damage. Exactly, Cecil. Yeah. What yeah, was that? Yeah, and you can reflect that with the Star Veil. We'll, we will show you guys that exactly as soon as we get to there. So that is why Star Veils are a very, very useful item in Iridia Percent. There is a Grimoire that is a random summon. Can be useful sometimes. We're gonna just keep on trucking here. Keep on trucking. Get 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 these get these things here. See if there's anything that you want. But it looks like the Mad Ogre chest is the very last one. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the save point. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I better not. <laughs> Cause. I did not actually heal after I saved, did I? No, I did not. So, yeah, let's make sure that we cabin up. Yeah, you always want to make sure you save, especially in Iridia Percent. Because if you mess things up, you could actually deal with all kinds of stuff that happens. So, yeah, it could be very, very gnarly. Alright, here we go, guys. Very remembering the only boss that's considering a flying monster is Plague. I think you are correct. And so here are the Mad Ogres. Now the Mad Ogres, um, they are a bit they are a bit strong to uh, magic attacks. You can you can go ahead and try and use the Grimoire on them if you want to. See if that does anything. Oh, and we got Beak Percent that does only one damage. But I highly recommend that you just either Odin them or Leviathan them. Odin doesn't always work, so sometimes sometimes it's hit and miss. We don't have any more of uh, hourglasses, so we want to make sure that we uh, take them down as quick as we can. One of our Rydia's just died in the front row there. That is unfortunate. We're going to go ahead and revive that Rydia. There we go. I find it funny how Valvalis, when she's not spinning, can be hit by uh, stuff like Quake, even though she's a wind fiend. Yeah, exactly. That is very in that is an interesting point, you know. Yeah, and also trap chests don't can don't have key items, but you could find good loot in here, and plus it gives you some good EX space. So, great point to make. Let's go ahead and do another Leviathan there. Oh, and you are going to be kind of a troll there, Mr. Ogre. Yeah, he, he decided to knock us down there. 
Yeah, and yeah, they could have like all kinds of good stuff. Okay, that you notice that radio doesn't do a whole lot of damage there. Because she doesn't have as good equipment as the other radios do. So, so you can see the difference in your um, agility anchoring equipment. Now, unfortunately, it looks like, you know, looks like he is being quite a troll there. So, we only got, like, experience on three of our radios. Which is a little unfortunate. We got a silver apple there. That does give her a little bit more HP max. So, you can go ahead and use that on one of your radios. I went ahead and used it in the center radio because she had the least amount. So, I'm going to go ahead and head back. Heal up, and then we are going to go and fight the first what boss. Heck yeah! Oh, yeah. What? What is it, Kanazo? Yeah, I, I beat Kanazo. Oh. On your FF4 boss. Oh, 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 yeah! On the chat, nice, GG, man. <laughs> I'm like, D -d 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 is it Kanazo? <laughs> That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. No, he's not a troll. He's an ogre. Exactly. What are you doing in my swamp? So you can continue onward. Alright. So here we are. It looks like we're fighting Octo Mammoth. Um, this boss has quite a bit of agility, so use the Silk Web if you can. And then just start doing your best summons on him. He is going to hit really hard. So, you may want to use some of your illusions here to start dodging some of his attacks. Um, one, one thing uh, I don't think everyone knows is that Mad Ogre is actually a mage. Yeah, that is another excellent thing to uh, point out. The Mad Ogres that we were fighting, you can actually kill them with the uh, mute, mute arrows. Or mute knife, or anything that hits mages. Exactly. Elven bow will will deal damage to him as well too. Yeah, hey, I just thought I'd point that out. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great observation there, and that is something that I missed. So if you guys fight those uh, mad ogres at all, and you can't defeat them with magic, try to beat them down with a bunch of uh, mute arrows and elven bow. Yeah, and they are also, they are considered both giants and mages. So that is interesting to note as well, too. So you, if you have an ogre axe, you can use that as well. But really, I can't use that, so. <laughs> but Cecil can. Of course. Alright, so. Now, I went ahead and healed there anyway. I didn't need to because you get a free heal here. Because this is where the Rubicante spot is. Now, we are fighting Dr. Luage. At this spot. Now, first phase, we're just going to use a bunch of summons on him. Yes, and it is French Vanilla. Absolutely. He decided to come up the tower instead of going down. And yes, he will always hit, Belnet will always hit the doctor at the very first. So that is always a nice thing to see when the doctor just dies. He he sometimes will just get beat up by Valnav and it's hilarious. I've had that happen several times. Yeah, just go ahead and just summon the heck out of him and kill him. Hey 46, how you doing? Hey, how's it going 46? <clears throat> yeah, 46 is in voice yet. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he's just chilling. It's you all just good. Join or something? He's welcome to, but yeah, he he's watching the stream right now. Okay. Yeah, so if he wants if he wants to ask any questions, we can or point out anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So so here is uh, Doctor Luage phase two. I'm gonna start using star veils. I will show you guys why I use these star veils in just a sec. And notice these radios that are going first, they are able to go first before he is actually able to transform due to that agility anchor that we have in the middle there. Yeah, if you use stock, if you use Starvels, all on the all attacks except for his opening poison attack, 
Who just reflects? And look at that! The beam just reflects straight back onto him. And, and the, the laser will not, hit him. will not hit at all. And there go the, there goes the emission. So there you go, guys. That is a way to actually mitigate his attacks. Thank okay. you for Cake Set 2 for pointing out this strategy. Absolutely, yes. And he is somebody who had showed it to me. I can barely hear you, dude. <clears throat> well, so that's all there is to it to this fight. Just summon summon the heck out of it. If you have Sylph instead of Leviathan, use that instead. Make sure that you keep your ethers going up because you gotta keep on uh, healing up your MP as well. And there it is. We have now cleared the hook boss. See, if I turn myself up, I start echoing. If I turn down, I'm not. If I turn down, you won't be able to hear me. No, I was talking to 46, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit quiet there. I didn't want to interrupt your broadcast. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, all good, sorry. dude. You're talking about me. Yeah, this is all Q and A. If you guys have like any questions or answers or anything, please let me know. Yeah. I was exactly. just saying, uh, the main, main reason I was uh, jumping on uh, chat was because uh, lag, stream is lagging quite a bit for me, so I had to Awesome. Hey there, Mikhail, how's it going? We're doing fine, I bet. How about yourself? It's great to have you guys. Things are good for me. Alright, alright guys, let's, uh, let's, let's hold it down. So everything, everything seems to be okay with the stream, right? Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yes, good thing to point out as well, Silk Summon doesn't consume any MP. You still need 25 MP to cast it. Exactly. That is another great point to point out, is if you do get that Silk Summon, it, you can spam the living heck out of it. <laughs> I don't know how Square missed that one point. That, that one... I don't know how they missed that. Well, it happens. They did, so... Not bad on your end? Awesome, dude. Ha enjoying a lazy Sunday, aren't we all? Alright, so now that we are here in the underworld, we can actually go and do a bunch more things here tonight. Pro they probably missed it because most vanilla game players never get that spell. That is true. Yeah, actually that probably that, is right. That is true. A lot of people don't always get that spell. So we're going to go ahead and heal here at uh, the Dwarf Castle. You get HP and MP right there in the basement. That is a free heal. But why, why and welcome to the stream, that? by the way, D155. Great to have you here tonight. Welcome. So we're going to go ahead and save outside Dwarf Castle here. I yeah. mean, why would you not get the Sylph Summon when you, uh... Alright, Cecil, dead? Cecil, okay, yeah. Can yeah, I don't know, man. It's just the way some people play it, you know? So what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and loot a bunch of stuff. And also sell some stuff that we don't need anymore. So like this stuff, this is all junk. Anything that Rydia cannot use, just sell it. Now, the white shirt is a very exceptional item. White shirt can only be used by young Rydia. Now, the thing is, if you want to actually uh, use that shirt, you want to make sure that you equip it on your Rydia before she grows up. So... I'm going to go ahead and put it on this Rydia. It is better than the black shirt. It prevents blind, resists spirits and undead, and also gives her will plus 15. So it is one of the better shirts that you can actually get. Yep. Do you grew up playing with it all? Yeah. Okay. It's all good. Normal game. You don't even know, know where you get it, to be honest. Super rare drop. Uh, you, all you do is you go down into Sylph Cave and hit Yang with the, the frying pan. It is an optional side quest. That's where it is in vanilla. 
So we're gonna go ahead and loop here first. Let's go ahead and just. There's. Yes. Because you tell me to be quiet all the time. Yeah, you, you you need to you need to you need to let me you need to let me do this, okay? Why am I my mic showing me need to? All right, let's let's go up to um, what you call it. I mean, it's okay if you talk like if it's like related to the stream or the tutorial, but anything else we want to we want to keep out of the out of the stream, okay? That's all I'm saying. So I just like to go ahead and and, and loot. I cast warp there because I don't feel like you know navigating back. And there we go. And there is a an item there, mute bell. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. There's some Bacchus swines that can actually be very useful on radios. Exits, we're gonna go ahead and buy those. Those can actually speed up seeds quite a bit for you guys. And um, we already have star bales, so I just went ahead and bought those two items that we didn't have. We're gonna go ahead and sell sell a bunch of our uh, merchant food here. Let's see, kamikaze. I will. I'll probably just keep that for now. That could be useful later on. Zeus gauntlet. I'm keeping. Black shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and sell. We don't need that. Mute knife. We can sell that now. We don't need those. Um, archer. Sell that. Um, do we do we need a black shirt? Let's just reassess our situation here. Sorcerer, sorcerer, black, white, adamant. Okay, so looks like we have an extra black. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell that. Sell the blitz whip. You don't need that. Very rarely do I ever use the blitz whip in radio percent. All right, so there, it, there it is. There it is done. So we are going to go ahead and save. What was that? I was TGing 46 and Kayla. Oh, nice! Jo nice! You guys killed uh, Val. Nice. Yeah, Val is one of the hardest enemies to kill in a radio percent. And looks like we have a van uh, French vanilla trollbez here. Ooh, that could be quite dangerous. He is a bit harder than he would be in his vanilla spot. Because of the high magic. And there is a reason why we call him Trollbez. You will see this in just a second. So let's go ahead and use our Star Veils. Yeah, the high magic, he will definitely have quite an advantage over your party. Now that Tifa on the bottom there that has that adamant armor will be immune to his effects. So fortunately for that Tifa on the bottom there, we are good. Yeah, he only casts spells, so make sure you star veil. <laughs> so that is why we buy star veils. I cannot emphasize that enough. Get star veils. You need them in Iridia Percent. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Jenica, absolutely. You definitely want to have more Star Veils and more Pylons, of course, if you're Protoss. You must construct you additional need... Pylons. He's paralyzing stuff. And yes, he, he paralyzes and he, he will eat you down to like two or three. Yes, yeah, so it controls also the whole gap. Yep, the hold is nasty. Oh yes, it is. Ow! So it looks like we're gonna be doing this uh, solo radio style here. Yeah, so see the one with the adamant armor? She's not taking any damage at all. And reflecting all of those spells back because yeah, you see how much agility he has? He has a lot of agility. Yeah, Kyle Burna has a lot of Now, if I did not have adamant armor, this would have been an easy reset. Don't even bother fighting him. 
<laughs> he would pretty much own every single one of us. One so, of the worst spots to troll bears is at Odin's spot. Now, oh yeah, Odin's spot, he can be really, really bad, yes. Oh my gosh. His Odin attack is actually a magic attack. Absolutely. So yeah, that's why it does so much damage. And it looks like we got some Baron Guards here. And of course you get another Rydia there, which we just dismiss. You do not see anything, oh. Cecil! Cover your eyes! Well, Kayla, um... <laughs> well, they did the same thing with Bahamut Spot, or Bahamut Spot, with so much physical attack power. Exactly. So I don't understand it either, but... Yeah, I can watch you and not lurk and sleep. Hey, how's it going, Retro Games? Welcome back to Low World. Great to have you. So as you guys oh, can yeah, see yeah. right here, what we are doing is we have one radio alive here. Now, another thing you can do is you can also use a Moon Veil. We're going to try and try and revive our other radios here to see if we can get some more EXP on them. So that is the reason why I'm trying to get them back up. Now, these guys do not have a whole lot of physical attack at this spot, so that's the reason why I am doing what I am doing. So hopefully you're doing great tonight, Retro. Great to have you. So like I said, you know, every seed is going to be different depending on uh, what kind of bosses you deal with. It'll be kind of a learning curve to get what you need done and stuff. Doesn't It isn't always going to come, like, straight-handed. Doing well. You beat one game in a, in a single stream. Awesome, dude. It's like what I did with uh, Quest for Glory 1 a few weeks back ago. Really great times. Absolutely. And this is why I decided to do this stream early, is so that people from the East Coast do not have to go to sleep. I know a lot of people from the East Coast are up at this hour. So that is why I chose to stream at this hour, this tutorial, so that way anybody can can use it. Now I'm going to leave that other Rydia dead there, because there's nothing I can do with that Rydia there. Now it is a little bit of a war of attrition here sometimes, so you sometimes will have to just say, let's just go ahead and start Leviathan, and stuff like that. There we go. Yeah, drink the dragon's breath. Yes, I did that. I did that in that stream, too. That is one of the best deaths in that game. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, the Kaifal soldiers are pretty easy. You can hourglass them, if, or you can, like, coffin them. You can also Odin them if you want to. Alright, so now Rydia has been grown up. Click the character's dwarf castle. That'll turn your radios into adult radios on the fortress there. Makes it look nice and pretty. There you go. Yeah, I am West Coast myself. So there we go. Now, since we have the warp glitch on, first thing you do after you kill the boss in Dwarf Castle, immediately cast warp. And grab that item. And it is the Legend Sword. Beautiful. So that is the item in the sealed cave. And the nice thing about that is we now have the both items needed. And another adamant armor! Dark Castle with the value tonight. Beautiful. So we are going to go ahead and throw that adamant armor on that top radio right there. And let's see, that sorcerer robe, you're going to pass. Should we pass to this radio? Nah. We're going to give it to this radio here. There we go. And that is a very, very nice item to have. Very, very awesome indeed. 
yeah, you, that pretty much skips your sealed cave. You get two items there. It's really, really awesome whenever you get something nice like an adamant armor. Oh my gosh. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go into here. Grab, grab the HBMP restore pot like that. Now, what we need to do is we need to do a little bit of seed validation. So, we're going to go over here to Tumra. We're going to check the item shops here. And we're going to see what kind of job we have for our temp job dwarf as well. The Hourglass 2s are really nice. Let's go ahead and buy 10 of those. Those can be very useful later on in the game. And now the grind to 99. Yes, exactly. Grind to 50, actually. Close enough. <laughs> About halfway off. There you go. Dragoon armor. Defense sword. Succubus. A parking enforcement officer. So we got a Dorvin meter maid. Awesome. <laughs> And a crystal ring there. That is another really good item. Let's go ahead and throw that on this Rydia here. Who only had an iron ring. Beautiful. And let's head over here. And see what kind of stuff we have in this shop here. I'm a final boss. Temp, temp boss. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. I've seen that. And look at these beautiful items that we have here. A sorcerer robe and a tiara. Buy five of those if you haven't gotten any at all. Otherwise, buy like as many as you need. Throw those on every single one of your Rydias. Because those are the best helmet in the game. Plus 10 to wisdom. Resist lightning damage and dragons, of course, but the plus 10 to wisdom, very, very, very nice. So throw them on every single Rydia that you have, like that, and they will go to town on stuff. Yeah. So all five of our Rydias all have tiaras. They are going to be doing a lot of real damage to people. Heck yeah. And let's go ahead and sell some of the stuff that we don't need anymore now. All the stuff that we de-equipped. Might as well hold on to those. You never know if you're going to need this or this. But there you go. And now, another thing is, Zeus Gauntlet, old Rydia, adult Rydia can use that. So that is an advantage of adult Rydia. If you want to turn her into... A physical attacker that is her best ring to use the Zeus gauntlet of course all right so what do we have here we have samurai arrows you can use those if you want to that's a little bit of ammo not something I necessarily would buy but you know it might be useful now do we uh, check this spot you can just double check it yeah I remember we got hourglass too so those we bought because those are very useful at stunning enemies. Like, especially if you're doing level grinding. Very, very useful indeed. Had a pass on Kaipo Soldiers. I'll, I'll try the next one. Okay. Yeah, you can try the next boss. You might want to level up a bit, 46. If you can't defeat the Kaipo Soldiers... You can't, if you have that adamant armor though, you should be able to take them down though. You have to like Ether 2, and you can just pretty much, you can pretty much do that. Or if you, if you don't have an adamant, try to use a Moon Veil and Illusion so that way you will not actually take damage. So yeah, try that. Oh, you were talking about the FF4 boss. I was talking about the, the actual boss in this seed. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, that's, those are some valid points, though, because, see, sometimes you may not have all this. And there is the rat tail item. Tower key. Beautiful. 
All right, so next thing we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and check this item shop here. And there are some beautiful sirens. Buy 30 of those. You want to buy those. Believe me, you do. Those are very, very good for you. Oh, yes. So what we want to do is move those sirens up there. You do not necessarily always have sirens in a standard, but when you do, they are very, very good. So there you go, guys. So yes, this is uh, this is the Fey March. We just went straight up to here. Again, if you guys think I'm going a little too fast, please stop me. Ask any questions that you have. Because I know sometimes I do go a bit fast. But what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and loot some of this stuff here. Because we have the K summon flag on, we want to make sure that we check the bosses here to see if we can actually defeat them. Which is here in the library where the Chocobo is. Just go straight down and let's see what kind of bosses we got. And there is the Mist Dragon. The Mist Dragon definitely is a boss you want to look out for. Doesn't matter if you're doing Radio Percent Seeds or not. Because if you have that no key item flag, no free lunch, you have to kill the Mist Dragon and go back to Mist Town to be able to get an item from Rydia's mother. So, we are going to go ahead and fight that Mist Dragon. Now, this Mist Dragon can be a little trolly here. However, we have two adamant armors, so it should not necessarily be that bad. So, so we're just going to go ahead and do two summons here. I doubt we're going to be able to get off a third summon, if that at all, because, oh my gosh, look at how much agility. We couldn't even get off one! Wow! So yeah, the Mist Dragon definitely has quite a bit of agility at this Asura spot. So she can take you down quite fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a Silk Web to try and slow down this Mist Dragon. And see how much damage that Mist Dragon does? Don't even bother reviving your front radios. It's probably not worth it at this point because your front radios will be taking a lot of damage anyway. Wow. See how fast that Mist Dragon can go? Oh my gosh. She just like, like has so much agility. Oh my gosh. So you see, I'm having a little trouble with this because... You have to time the summons just right sometimes to be able to do damage. And yes, there is a trap chest in uh, the pathway uh, if you want to actually do that. And there we go. We finally got some uh, Leviathan off. Doing some damage there. Will it be enough? Probably not. Now... One thing I like to do is I always like to recover during uh, her uh, miss phase. So that is always something that you can do. Don't even bother healing. Because she will just one-shot the front radios there. That's why I got a whole bunch of life potions. So just wait for her to turn into mist. Wait for her to go through her cycle. Also... Um, make sure that you ether up as well, too, because if you don't have enough ethers, then you can't cast uh, summons, obviously. See, like right there, this is going to be our, our last summon before we can actually, uh, before we actually have to ether up. Yeah, sometimes the timing is a little hard to get down. That's, that'll come with experience, so don't... Don't, don't worry if you don't get it right off the bat. Trust me, it is something that is learned. So yeah, this is a very hard boss spot. 
And we are very low level for this spot, so... This is not something I, hi I recommend you guys do right away. I'm just showing you guys this just in case you want to, want to try to attempt to do it yourselves. Do we want a life? No. Okay. Now nah, we're good. Let's go ahead and wait for it to turn into mist. You need more ether, so let's go ahead and ether you up. So you need more as well. You're fine. So you're gonna be the one that summons next. That was a really good timing right there. I go ahead and summon on you as well. Yeah, for the for the videos that already have like adamant armors and stuff like that. Um Yeah, just go ahead and summon with them. Because there is, there's nothing that Miss Dragon can do to stop you at this spot if you have adamant armor. And there goes Miss Dragon. So now on my tracker here, I am going to go ahead and click that Miss Dragon there. That tells you that you have Miss Dragon done, and also adds a location and. And unfortunately, all we got is some merchant food. Would have been awesome for a Cecil, though. Like me. Yep, that's right, Cecil. <laughs> but that is um, one of the potential key item spots done. So you do not have to do that spot again. However, it is awesome that you now have a, the ability to go back to... Uh, Miss Village to check to see what item that you have. So yeah. There we go. Now the next boss, the next boss at Leviathan spot here may be a little difficult for us. So we'll see what we're dealing with here. And we'll ascertain the strategy and see what we can do. And it is the D-Lunars. Okay, so there is a very special strategy that I like to do with these dragons here. Let them let attack a bit. Use Star Veils on all your radius. Yes, they, they, they are called Frog Stomping Time! Well. It looks to me like it's frog stomping time. Yeah. Frog stomping time indeed. Now don't worry if your radios die. If you have to, use a silk or a moon veil or an illusion. We already have wall on these radios here, so just let their turns go. And watch what will happen now. Well, it looks to me like it's frog stomping time. And that's why I said don't worry about the Rydias that are dead already, because you can just revive them. And look at that. We turned them into frogs by using Star Veils. That is a really, really useful strategy for D-Lunars at any spot in the game. Just use a. I mean, hit them with a physical attack, and all they do is start casting. They try to cast well, they can't. They try to cast better if they can't. That's it. Yeah, and well, you don't want to physically attack them at all before you do that. And hey, how's it going, in? Good to have you here tonight. Welcome back to Low Roll. Yeah, if you want after that, you can just. You know. Yeah, just kill them. Just kill them as soon as they become frogs. Summon on them. Whip them. Do whatever you want. They are dra considered yeah. dragons, so you yeah. can use a dragon whip on them. If you want to be safer, okay, whatever. Uh, you can just physical fight them. They will not do anything after that. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what they do. I don't I don't fight them until they've transformed. 
That's yeah, the whole, that's the whole point of this strategy is you exactly. don't physically attack them the until they transform. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, because otherwise if you do, then they will, the, then this strategy will not work. Yeah, exactly. So there we go, guys. So that is an exploit that is very, very useful in Free Enterprise. People in call with Tifa, yeah, we got a... Uh, 46, and we got Cecil here in voice chat. Do you have any questions and answers? And there is the Twin Heart. Now that Fey March is cleared, we can now go ahead and do a few other locations here. So, um, now, now the thing is, I could just use Exit and just go straight out of here like that. That's pretty easy. You can loot if you want to a little bit more, but I'm just like, ah, it's not even worth it at this point. Alright, so. We're still looking for that darkness crystal, because if you guys remember at the very beginning of this scene, one of our random objectives is to clear the vanilla ribbon room, which is the vanilla D lunar spot. So, killing the D lunars at the Leviathan spot will not fulfill this objective so you have to go up to the moon and kill that boss there so just thought I would point that out in case you guys got confused on that objective already <laughs> so that's why it yeah, did not get clear absolutely all right so what are we gonna do now well there are a few things that we can do we can go to the Tower of Babel here. Because we have um, the Tower Key, we could do the full tower. So there are two spots in the tower, the cannon and, of course, the tops. So I'm going to go ahead and do the full tower. It seems like that's the best option at this point. Yeah, exactly. You know, usually when you're in the underworld already, you want to clear the rest of the underworld out if you can. Yeah, I'm not going to pick up any chests at all because there are four trap chests here which all have alerts. Don't even bother picking them up. Just go straight to the top. And we're going to go we're going to do a save once we get to the top there. We'll see what kind of monster we have up there that we're going to be dealing with. It'll be very, very interesting indeed. Alright. There is our save point. What we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and do the top. Lurks don't spit out high enough XP monsters to be worth grinding on. Correct. Exactly. You could be grinding on them for eons. And we got Leviathan up here. He could be a bit of a problem, but I think we could deal with him. Because this spot up here does not have very high magic. It's possible that his waves will completely miss us. Let's uh, also we're gonna fight water with water here, guys. How you like that? <laughs> so you notice the big wave didn't hit everybody because his um, magic is very very low. So yeah, we are just gonna do a bunch of summon on him. Now, if you didn't have summons or anything like that, the best thing would be, be to do would be to cast a bunch of viruses. And you have to level up to 26 to get virus. So that is another thing to point out. Is, if you're not level 26 a lot of the time, you may want to grind up to get to be level 26. And there are a few, po there are a few places you can grind if you don't have sirens. Um... You can grind up on ordeals. You can grind uh, in the Fame Arch with a bunch of clappers. Um, if you have Luca Key, you can grind on trapdoors. 
if you have darkness crystal, you can grind up on uh, the moon, of course. And there is Baron Key. So the Baron Key allows us access to Baron Castle. We're going to start heading back down. Now you can't exit or warp or do anything here, so don't even bother with that. Just go ahead and just hike it on out. We're going to go straight up to the tower here. Use the tower key, just like that. And there you go. Dark Imps! And is this even randomized? This is a complete vanilla boss. One summon pretty much will take him down. If you want to, virus will work just as well. And virus casts a bit faster, so sometimes that may be the best option. Is this even randomized? That is the vanilla dark imps. And there we go, folks. Yeah, this spot here, Tower Cannon, probably one of the easiest spots to do. So if you ever have to, you know, just get like a bunch of bosses and you want a key item or something, this is one of the, the easier spots to go and do. So just, just keep that in mind, guys. Any boss that you fight there will pretty much be a pushover. So now we are going to go ahead and head all the way back down the tower here. Just like that. Now, notice I'm still not grabbing the chest because, you know, it's just more time if you want to actually uh, burn a bit. I mean, you can grab those chests, but I usually find it to be a waste of time if you could just loot in areas that have nothing. But that is just, that is just how I play my seed. If you guys want to go ahead and kill those alerts, you can. Just keep in mind the alerts do have high magic resistance, so... The only way you're going to be able to do damage to them is be like Nuke or uh, Leviathan or Bahamut. Earth Crystal! Alright, so tower is clear. Um, the next thing we, we want to do at the very end of the uh, underworld here, as you may see on your tracker, is Fabul Sheila Self. So just go down into Sylph Cave here. And just make a beeline straight for Yang. So that's the only thing that we are going to be doing here. Is we're just going to make a make a beeline straight for Yang. And then after we're done with that, we can go straight up and talk to Sheila for a free key item. And you don't have to have the frying pan to get the frying pan. So, otherwise... That would, that would pretty much defeat logic. It doesn't matter what item you choose there either. You just have to talk to him and that's it. Yes, and also another thing. Don't loot in Sylph Cave. Not even in the room with Yang. Because you will only have, you will have 1 HP on all your Rydias. And that is very, very bad. So don't do that. Alright, let's break out of the underworld here. Notice that even though I am in the yellow airship... You can still break out of it. You don't have to have the red airship drill to break out of the underworld. So I thought that was very interesting. The only way you can get the yellow airship is to do tower before you before you actually break out of the underworld. So I just thought I'd point that out. That's a little bit of a little interesting thing in Free Enterprise. Just to make sure that you aren't soft locked. So let's go talk to Sheila. Don't no need to save there. Unless you want to. So we're going to go ahead and talk to Sheila. Let's see if Sheila has the goods, folks. Hopefully she will have the goods. So what do we have for us tonight? And is this even randomized? Vanilla frying pan. Well, you know what that means. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Not the mama. 
So that is why you always want to go ahead and do Sylph Cave even if you don't have the frying pan. And sometimes you'll have a vanilla frying pan just like that. My case in point exactly. <laughs> and I have both shotgun with malicious intent. Oh boy. <laughs> Take on some bosses. Absolutely, guys. And now we're going to go straight back down into the self cave over here. Just like that. And there we go. Yeah, always make sure that you take the second staircase here, and then just keep on going. So, we have a little meme here in my little realm here that is known as low roll. Whenever the frying pan comes out, we gotta do the baby Sinclair impression. Not the mama! <laughs> yes, not the mama. <laughs> and we get the package. There is the package right there. That is 9 out of 17. So we are going to go ahead and go straight back up and talk to Sheila again for item number 2. Yes, I have the doll. Yep, this is the good old baby Sinclair Donald. I the baby! I love me! <laughs> Absolutely. Because this game was made back in the 90s, you guys. We gotta have the baby Sinclair. <laughs> That's a throwback if, if it ever is, right? Absolutely. This is why I love my shotgun? Yes, because you can take down them bosses. Absolutely. Alright, let's see what we got up here with Sheila. What kind of good do you have? Let's go ahead and select the pan. The Sand Ruby! Now, Sand Ruby is really good early on, but right now, doesn't do much of anything. So, all it gives us is 10 out of 17. You used to have the Urkel doll. Got to think of it. Think of a way to work it into your stream. Oh my gosh, that would be so awesome, Jenica. I would love to see that. That would be really, really awesome. The series had one of the the darkest endings I had ever seen. Yes. Oh my gosh, the Ice Age. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. <laughs> okay, now. Remember that we killed Demist up in uh, the, the Fey March? Well, make sure that you go to this side of Mist Town. Because if you go to the other side, you'll set off the package. We're going to go ahead and save there just because we can. Yeah, I have one of the craziest dark endings ever. Talk to Rydia's mother here. We'll go ahead and get an item there. Let's see what we got. And it is the Darkness Crystal. Okay, that is a very good item for us, guys. Because what that allows us to do is it gives us access to the moon. So what we have to do is we have to actually get up to the moon to go ahead and kill that um, vanilla D lunar spot. The ribbon spot, so... We are going to go straight up to the moon. So that definitely was a value there. That is why you kill the mist dragon and go get the demist item. And there you are in Zot instead. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Zot isn't a bad play, actually. But see, that's the thing in Randomizer. There are many different decisions that you can make that can pretty much influence your course and the fact that we now have 11 out of 17 we now have double experience oh yeah you could see if there's Bahamut there there could be 
Yeah, we could we could go ahead and uh, kill Bahamut for another key item if we wanted to. But at this point, the only objective that we have to do to get the crystal, according to our tracker, why do I keep hitting change? Is to conquer the Villa Ribbon Realm. That will give us to get give us the crystal for Go Mode. So that is what we are focused on right now. So yeah. Pretty much. Pray to the Enterprise, Space Whale. The final frontier! These are the voyages of the Big Black Whale. Its continuing mission to go up to the moon. Absolutely. <laughs> the Enterprise actually is the, the ship on the ground. It's kind of funny because this is the spaceship. And, of course, all of us being Trekkies, we want to call this one the, this one the Enterprise, don't we, guys? <laughs> Alright, now you can also go over here into this hole here and talk to uh, the Hummingway for some shops, if you want to. Yes, uh, another thing is we will, we will take a look at egg grinding as well, too. And now... The Hummingway is always going to be like one of these guys. And there are some coffins right there. Now that actually is a really good point, Kayla, because buying these coffins actually sets that grind up quite well. So, that is something that is definitely something you want to consider. So, I will go ahead and show you guys that now, actually, now that we have coffins. Because this grind that I'm going to show you is we're going to make some eggs. Because you never know what's up at that D lunar spot. It could be Valvalis. It could be anything. We don't know yet. But before we make that call to go up there, we're going to go ahead and grind a little bit. So that may actually be something that we want to do. Well, in my defense, the big whale does indeed look like the Enterprise. Yeah, it kind of does, you know? It kind of does look like, you know, the NCCA-1701, right? <laughs> Alright, so you notice this spot over here. This is our siren spot right there. Just land right there. There is another spot. Let me just show you guys where it is over here. I think it, I think it's over here in this little alcove. I forget exactly. I think it's like yeah, it's like right there. But this is the easier one to remember, so I always just go here. Some people go up there. I don't know why. There's not that much difference. And notice I didn't even heal there, because we don't even need to heal at this point. We're going to go ahead and just bring our coffins up to the top of our inventory here and just start using them. It's that easy. It's that easy to grind here. Some people go up by surf keg because it's flatly faster. Yeah, well, some people do that, yeah. It, it could be slightly faster. It's just that it's, it's hard to remember. It's not one of the easiest spots to yeah to pick out, you know? Yeah. This yeah. one is is the easier one to remember. Yeah, yeah coffins will instant kill these, but they are not required. If you do not get coffins, let me just show you guys what you do instead. Yeah, you burninate them, or you, you use a bunch of, uh, what you call it. You can use a bunch of spells here. Like, on the, on the radios, they have, like, the highest wisdom. Like, this radio. Use a virus. Should be able to pretty much uh, one-shot this guy here. Yep. 1,800 damage is how much damage you have to deal. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level up to level 38. This is probably one of the... Then the grinds, you guys might not even want to do this earlier in the game, too, if you are stuck anywhere. This is something that you guys might want to do. 
because this will give give your Ridia's a lot more powerful magic and spells. See, like now we're getting Ice Three here. See, check that out. Ice Three you get at level thirty-eight. That is your first third level spell. So there we are. Or you could just say to heck with it. I'm gonna go all the way up to level fifty if I want to. But I am also going to demonstrate both grinds. So, definitely something. Yes, yeah, so the eggs have like 1800 health. If not killed in one hit, they become yellow dragons. You can, all, you can cast two viruses on them. They still won't kill your radios. So sometimes you might just want to like cast two viruses. And then that'll kill them before they can actually counterattack. Because virus is your best spell in, on your radio. So I'm going to go ahead and cabin up here. And we're going to head back up to the moon. Yes, and also, that's another good point. Um, if you don't have virus or if you want to try an alternate strategy, you can get, like, let's say, Artemis Arrows or a Dragon Whip along with, let's say, the Heroin Rope for more physical damage. That will increase your strength and your physical attack there as well, too. And you can almost one-shot them as well with with uh, Dragon Whip. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to um, go straight up to the moon. Absolutely, guys. Yep, let's go straight up to the moon. Good times indeed. So now, we are going to make a beeline for the D-Lunar spot. This is something that we definitely want to do. Because this, it, this spot down here is a spot that is part of our objective. And that we know exactly where the crystal is, so there's no point in going anywhere else in this seat at all. So does anyone have any questions on that objective? That is just one of, one of the hundred of objectives, the hundreds of, that can be possible. So it's going to be different every time. If you're not sure on what objectives are what, make sure you ask. Um, like on the, the Free Enterprise websites, if you go to ff4fe.com, they have a whole bunch of different seeds that have, I mean, a whole bunch of different objectives that you can generate. And you can, there, there are endless possibilities of them. And that's why I like doing the random ones, because you just never know what you're going to get. Like the box of chocolates. Alright, so we are just making a beeline straight for the final save point here. So this is something we are going to be required to do. Yeah, I'm not getting, I'm, another thing is I'm not getting any of the trap chests here at all either. Because the, these are a bit strong. You do not want to fight them unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, so the Dark Crystal is the other item that you need to get to Zeromus, yes. So you can go to Zeromus the long way like we're doing right now. Or on the way to it. We're, we're going to the final save point. Or the pass. Yeah, so you need the Dark Crystal, and you need the Regular Crystal. And in order to get the Regular Crystal, you complete those objectives. That was pretty much what this black set set up for us. So, yep. There you go. So, go ahead and save right there. That Notice I hadn't saved in a long time. Don't do that. Make sure you save a little bit more often than I do. <laughs> you don't want to lose your data. Alright, so this is the boss that we have to kill. And it is Asura. 
The best thing you can do with this boss is use a star veil on one of your radios here and use another star veil on that same radio. Just go ahead and parry with the other radios. I probably should say more often, but I don't. Yeah, yeah, you should, Cecil. <laughs> Especially <laughs> if you die. Because you will lose a lot of progress. And now, what we can do is we can bounce spells off of our radios and hit a Sura with them. So that is probably the best thing you can do. Just cast a bunch of Ice Threes on your radios and bounce them off because she will not counter. Got in the habit of saving uh, literally any time I get off the Enterprise. Yep, that is a good thing to do. Oh yes. So as you guys can see, um, this boss is definitely one you want to bounce spells off of. Because if you decide to like summon, she will counter with a physical attack. So you don't want to do that. Now you can actually uh, use, let's say, Mute Arrows and Artemis Bow to attack her physically. But she will still counter attack. And it can be a little dangerous. So this is why I'm doing this strategy here. She isn't pr particularly weak against any particular magic, so... You could use, like, any spell you want. I'm just using Ice 3 because that's probably the fastest spell that we can use that does the most damage. And you want to be careful to watch your Star Veils, too, because if your Star Veils run out, then... That really is going to die. I highly doubt that that will happen, but you never know. And yes, you can uh, you can also you do the life lock strategy. Oh, looks like uh, we ran out of uh, Star Veil there. So we are going to go ahead and... And that's another thing. I also had Adamant on that radio, so... All the ice trees are only doing one damage there. And uh, you also want to be careful here too because um, if you know that your star veil is running out then so is her star veil. So we're going to go ahead and use the second Star Veil on, on one of the other radios there. Just to renew the enemy Star Veil, so that way she does not cure for herself back up to full health. And that's all there is to defeating Asura. 200,000 EXP. Nice. And we got Lit 3 and Quake. Beautiful. How many spells are reflected via Star Veil? Excellent question. It really depends on however, however much uh, uh, wisdom you have on your radios. Obviously, if you have higher wisdom, you can do more damage. Also, it depends on the spell. Like, if you had level 50, you could uh, reflect nukes onto, onto, onto Asura, and she'll be dead really, really fast. So, yeah, like, like I said, it varies, but, you know, you want to... This spot has like what about 40,000 HP? 40, 50,000? Something along those lines. Just enough to do, do enough damage. And there is the final objective. We just received the crystal. And that is go mode. Is Radius Speed determined by Wisdom, not Agility? Not necessarily. Um, her turn order is is determined by the Agility. That is correct. But like her, the speed at which she can kill enemies, like her damage per second, that is what's determined by her Wisdom score. That way she deals more damage to your enemies. Excellent question indeed. Excellent question. And you can get the items here. Nothing too fancy there. Because we don't have the moon flag on. 
there is nothing there. So we're going to go ahead and also we're going to save here. And I'm going to show you guys King Ryu grinding as well too. So this is an alternate grind that you can do that's a little bit more difficult to do. However, if you have something like uh, your hourglasses, your hourglass twos, make sure you put them up here like that and you can, you can pretty much freeze the, those uh, snakes, those dragons, and you, can, and you can deal a lot of damage to them. Uh-huh. Let me see if I can sit up in the other room before you finish. All right. Absolutely. So what you want to do is you want to go up one floor here from the final save point, go through this cave, go out, and just right here is where you want to use your sirens. This is where the King Ryu grind is. First thing you do, as soon as you get to them, hourglass. Absolutely. Been looking, but wanted to say hi. Hey, how's it going, Seth? Good to have you here tonight. Welcome back to Low Roll. Doing some Radio Percent 101. And now we're going to use Lit 3s here. And there's also D Machine uh, Grind in the Giant, but it's typically not really efficient for Radio Percent because by the time you get weak, you will pretty much uh, already have uh, nuke already, and it's pretty much useless unless you want like unless you want to like overgrind. Okay, so there we go. We got like our lit set up. I cast lit three times, and then I went to the fourth radio here. I'm going to use life potion preemptively on this dragon here. I'm going to try to set up what's called what's known as a double life glitch. Well, it didn't quite work. We only got a single life glitch because we couldn't get the the next turn off of Ridia after that. So sometimes that might work, sometimes it might not. Just something you guys may want to try. So that that is a, the life glitch. There it is. And that gives us 180,000 EXP instead of 120. That you would normally get. Plus, you want the weak, weak spell to efficiently do this grind, exactly. Now would be a good time to explain life glitching, exactly. So, exactly, uh, because casters are based around their uh, uh, wisdom stat, much like in Dungeons and Dragons, black mages and wizards are intelligence based, my mages clerics are wisdom, and, and summoners are charisma based. If FF used charisma as a stat, that's, that's very interesting to know. That's some good D&D lore, especially. For, like, FF4 uh, purposes, CLI Wisdom is, like, 75 there. That's the stat you want to be looking at. That is that is your super powerful Wisdom stat. Now, this Rydia here with the Curse Ring, we're going to go ahead and remove that Curse Ring. Now, she can do a lot more damage. You don't necessarily need to do Agility Anchoring anymore now. Because uh, she's pretty much going to be doing more damage without that curse friends. So we're going to go ahead and um, siren up here. We're going to hourglass. And let me just show you guys the life glitch one more time here. Um, now that we have weak here, we, what we can do is we can weak on, on the King Reuse. And. After this, we're going to go ahead and cast a Lit 3 here. Now, the reason I'm casting a Lit 3 is for the delay effect. And because I know that that Lit 3 is going to kill that back King Ryu, I'm going to preemptively try using a life and see what happens. Okay, it looks like it used it a little too fast there. So, so sometimes you can pull off what's known as a double life glitch if you actually get them in the correct order like that. So yeah, that is the life glitch. Sometimes you can get it twice there. Not all the time, though. So yeah, then again, just use weak on them once you get it. You get it at level 48, so once you have weak, 
you know that you don't have very much luck far to go, you know? Yeah, heck yeah! Old D&D Dirt, we love you guys. Absolutely, guys. And there we go. We got Fatal and Nuke on some of our videos there. Beautiful. And it looks like we got Weak Fatal and Nuke on one of our other videos there. Okay. This is the optimal situation right now. We have all of our radios on level 50. Now the nice thing about this seed is we have a bunch of tiaras and adamants, which gives us a lot of damage. So the more damage that you can stack due to your wisdom stat on your radio, that's the better chance you'll have against fighting Zeromas and, and killing him a heck of a lot faster than you normally would. Alright, so now that we are done, we are going to go ahead and use an exit to get out of here. Now you can warp out of here if you want to or walk or whatever. I'm just using an exit to go ahead and get out of here the fast way. Use the big whale. I'm going to go ahead and take a nice little nap just because I can. You don't have to if you don't want to. So there you go. Absolutely, guys. And you can get it three times if you lower your battle speed. Yeah, it is possible to get a triple life glitch. I have done it once. And I actually have it on my uh, highlight reel a while back ago. All my radio percent highlights that I actually got a triple life glitch. It is not something that is easy to do at all, but it is doable. Yes, so that is what we are going to do. Since this is Free Enterprise versus Vanilla, we have the pass, so we are going to go ahead and head to Troya. Absolutely. D&D is my poison. D&D Beyond is my muse. Actually, the uh, WM recurring campaign, like right now, nice. Been uh, storytelling Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle for about two years now. Going to run some Cyberpunk Red next weekend. Oh, that sounds awesome, dude. Heck yeah. Alright, so let's just head straight over to Troya here. Now, the biggest thing you want to take a look at before you do anything with Zeromus. Go to the custom menu. Set your battle speed to like three or four. I usually can I, I can set it to three, but you guys might want to even set it to all the way down to six if you want to. Three is good for me. But yeah, you want to set it to like three or higher to slow down the battle a bit. Now... I'm a speedrunner. I'm a speedrunner. I set it to one. You set it to one? Yeah. It, it, that's, that's a little bit more advanced. We're not going to get, get, get into like a... Uh, run buffering too much here but yeah using reflex straps you can run buffer but it is really really difficult so what we are going to do is we're going to check our agility on all our videos right now 40 25 25 30 and 40 now the closest multiple to 28 without going over I mean, under, excuse me, is this Rydia here? So she is the winner of the new car. On the price is right! <laughs> here we go. So let's go ahead and save. Now, another thing you want to check that before you actually go into this fight, also check to see and make sure that you have silk webs, star veils, and cure threes. Those are your three items that you want. Those those items are are going to be what is going to be your lifeblood when it comes to a Zeromus fight with all Rydia's. Now, ne not necessarily will you need to heal or do anything like that. Usually, a lot of the times, you'll be able to kill Zeromus before he can get off that second big bang. So, we're going to go ahead and save. Now that we have our agility set up, our battle speed set up, Pretty much all our items sorted out. 
And also make sure you have the crystal in case you have to forge it or do anything else. Because if you don't have the crystal, obviously you can't kill Z. Alright, so here we go. <laughs> Good times indeed, guys. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy. I have a pass right here! What are you talking about, man? I got a pass right here! Let's go! And yes, I did explain anchoring earlier. Best, best thing that you need to know is... Um, uh, multiple of 14 without going over. So like 14, 28, 42, 56 uh, without going under. Those values are usually your best uh, values for fighting Zeromas. And you want to make sure that that character is in the middle. So that is what you want to do. Now it is time to ask that famous age-old question of who's about to even kick tonight, folks? Let us find out. Absolutely. All right. So here we go. I've actually been told that 14 is not a good agility. You've been told that 14 is not a good agility? Eh. Yeah. Who knows? So, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, 28 plus agility. So if you have 25 agility, um, that's really bad. But if you have um, like 28, 29, or 30, that's really good. But you have 27, that's really, really bad. So it's like multiples of 14 without going underneath it. So if you go underneath that multiple, the then it could be really, really bad. So like 42 is good, 28 is good, 43 is good, 29 is good, 30 is good, 44 is good. Exactly. And if you need like some uh, agility-based items, um, you, can, you can definitely uh, swap stuff around. The crystal ring gives you plus five to agility. One thing to note is that you mentioned 25 agility, right? 25 agility is what you get on Rydia at level 50. So if you have a ninja helmet, you can equip that ninja helmet on one of your Rydia's, set her in the center, and then you have 28 agility right there and then. So there you go. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that's why. That's why. It's because it's, well, it's just the way that the Zeromas fight works with uh, agility anchoring. Let's find our crystal here, and let's see whose butt we're gonna kick tonight. Yeah, so it's a bit of yeah, it's a bit of a agility anchoring code manipulation, exactly. Now, the second radio here, we're just gonna go ahead and use the star veil. And who is it? Scooby Doo time, folks! Oh my! Chaos! Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> it is Chaos from Dissidia, I believe. Shotgun time! Absolutely. You call a shotgun on me? And we can go ahead and waste that Moon Veil. We haven't even used it, so why not? Okay, third reading out here. Use the Silk Web. Hopefully that's enough delay to actually uh, not whiff the Silk Web. And then fourth radia bounce. Dissidia. Yeah, Dissidia. Final Fantasy. Dissidia. Uh, Final Fantasy. To, I have yet to actually beat that game. Yeah, that's a really good sprite. And then just start nuking one of your bounce radias there. That's all you have to do. That's 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 the strategy. And you guys notice that. I used like a few extra star veils there in hopes that he would actually bounce the nuke back onto him after the silk web counter. So that is a strategy that I have learned over time that works. And look at how much damage we're doing with our nukes. That is a lot of damage. Yeah, like 8600. And the nice thing is, you only have to do 65k. And there goes his shake. But with all these nukes hitting him, I would not be surprised if he never gets a second Big Bang off at all. 
You wanna watch D2 again, huh? Diablo 2 or Destiny 2? Maybe an idea, yeah? Yeah, Diablo 2. Yeah, that's something we can try and do. Absolutely, guys. And that's all there is to it. Just keep on nuking. Now you notice, I immediately go down. I always hit, I always hit down and then A. Immediately, once my turn hits up. That is something that you guys should probably practice, is your menuing here. That is how I can get these nukes off really, really fast. It's in my brain from all my speedruns I do. <laughs> and there is his first big bang. It will be nerfed, so don't even worry about all the damage it will do. See? Piece of cake. Oh yeah, I, I did some Doom 2 uh, earlier this week. That was fun. Absolutely, guys. And there it is! That is the Radiant Percent 101. Yay. Yep! Oh, Destiny isn't your flavor? <laughs> there oh, it God. is. Thank you guys for the GDs. Now, if you guys have any questions on that Zeromus fight, let me know. Heck yeah, I got some Radio GGs in here. From Seth and Kayla. And Crescent's got some awesome other GGs as well. Awesome good times. And Dragonfire. Great to have you guys here tonight. Yeah, Destiny isn't my flavor either. I know it's something that a lot of people like and enjoy, but it's not something that I particularly want to play. Well, thank you for those GGs as well, Retro Gamer. And, Jenica, you have some really good GGs as well. Mikkel, love all those awesome Ridias. Heck yeah! Firefox update is available. I always hit download update and it still, still tells me to download it. I don't know why. Every time I start Firefox, it's always an update. <laughs> Twelve hundred dollars soon be. I could buy. I can max sub. Oh my, that would be awesome. Yeah, everybody's everybody's getting that uh, stimulus for the coronavirus. Yeah. That's crazy, I'm isn't it? Playing Doom and I give up those gift subs. In a bit. That would be pretty badass. Then I can finally get a capture card, since if you guys are that generous, that would be so awesome. Then I can show off some other games for you. That would yeah, be that pretty might. badass. Yeah. Heck I'm yeah, 46. 46. Yeah. There's some GG's there. Good times indeed. And here's all your stats here. You notice this is like the flag string there. Radio 101 is the flag name. The seed name, of course. So, two hours, 12 minutes, that's probably probably a time that is a little bit faster than what I would normally expect for you guys, especially if you're doing this for a first time or something like that. So, definitely some good times indeed. There you go, Tifa. Video cookies. Aw, oh, thank you, 46. You're an awesome dude. Absolutely. It's about my time with all the normal characters. Yeah. And see, since I've been practicing this for well over a year now, I know a lot of uh, the strategies to this. I know that you always have to have, like, your wisdom stat as high as it can go, so that way Rydia can deal a lot of damage. Alternatively, you can also turn her into a warrior princess, zerk her with a bunch of Bacchus vines, get a bunch of dragon whips, and kill Z that way. I have done that, it's just very, very rare to say. There may be an incentive, a point channel incentive, is to do, do, a, do a no magic Rydia, no summons, no magic Rydia percent. That, that is actually a lot more challenging. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you put that uh, other point reward up yet where uh, you can redeem Hella percent? 
Uh, no, I have not yet. I need to do that. Now, of course, as is tradition at the end of every seed, as you guys well know, we have to go back to Miss Village. Also, I'm going to end this stream with the, the music because we actually do have the Twin Heart. And also, yeah, drag a stream at 1,000 followers. So oh, tell your friends. Get, get some more people to follow. Great to have you guys follow. That's really all I want is just a lot, a lot of people here. Just being here. That's all you guys really need to do for me. Being here, chatting, supporting, even if you're just lurking. Because I know I always stream pretty late and stuff like that. This is very unusual for me. But I wanted to do this for you guys. I wanted to see see how you guys would give... I, I wanted to give this a little bit more accessibility for you guys. Also, we are going to be creating a Iridia Percent Asynchronous League race every week. So if you guys want to join any of... Uh, those seeds in my discord please feel free to join that and ask any of uh, the overlords any questions Cecil or myself we can get you set up with the seeds and stuff like that if you have any questions at all if you want like some one-on-one -on -one tutorial attention let us know as well too by DM we're very friendly we would love to have some uh, cooperate cooperative seeds and stuff like that and hey, how is it going? Hi, Seraph. How are you doing? We just finished yeah. up our tutorial here. I, I will help you. Um, not as good as thirty percent anymore, but I can help you out some. Oh yeah, and Cecil, you know, he also does his own thing with um his Cecil percent. So definitely good if times there too. To, um, if anyone wants to uh, help with Cecil percent, uh, feel free to DM me. Exactly. All right, so there was our spoiler log. We're going to go ahead and reset. And we are going to go ahead and finish off this seed with a little bit of a bang there. It's great to have you here tonight. Hi, Sarah. Great to have you. Hopefully things are going well. Thanks for the shout out. 46, I appreciate it. Bro. Yeah, and make sure you guys go ahead and follow him. He is an awesome person. So let's see what we got in the package. Slow motion! <laughs> there goes a bunch of roses on fire that's one hot chick man we got a bunch of hot chicks burning Why down Rydia's village <laughs> and you know <laughs> Well, thank you for the follow, Michael uh, Artoria. Absolutely. I hope I didn't butcher your name. I Slow motion. Butcher your name. <laughs> thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Red Wing. Welcome. Slow motion. <laughs> I like doing that slow motion and like. Okay, we'll go ahead and speed this part up. And is this even randomized? Well, of course it is. That's an old radio, not a young radio. <laughs> ah. And it's a randomized palette. Yes, it is. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and see what our music is for tonight. Since we have the twin opera, we never actually went ahead and did that spot. Okay, good, good. I'm included in Butcher Your Name. Awesome, <laughs> dude. I do that sometimes. And let's go grab us. Let's go grab us a bird here. Bird, bird, bird. Bird is a word. What a bird, bird, bird. Bird is a word. What a bird, bird, bird. Bird is a word. Heck yeah. It's boss time. Absolutely, guys. Take some bosses down. So yeah, this was a three hour long tutorial. If you guys want like any other help with free enterprise in general or Rydia Percent 101 or anything like that, Please feel free to message me. I hope this will also be posted up on YouTube in case you guys would like to um, view it later on as well. 
the white mage is sick of your crap. <laughs> <laughs> white mage is sick of your crap, exactly. <laughs> That is so good! And... Kayla nice! Down, but everyone else died. Nice! Kayla, take it down, Dr. Luage. Excellent! <laughs> sure! Absolutely! Everyone else, though? So here we go, guys. Let's see what we got. We got here. Other world. Oh, yes. What is the music? Otherworld! Final Fantasy X. Oh, okay. Jack's theme, you know? When you kill him and stuff. Alright okay. guys, uh, that'll do it for me tonight. Uh, great to have you guys here tonight. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, end stream. We're gonna find somebody to raid. See who's on tonight. Alright. But it's great, great that you guys came out here. Um, again, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to ask in the Discord or ask anywhere else. Let's see who is uh, on tonight. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I think I know who we are going to raid. We are going to raid Mina Cold Rocket. She anyone is playing some, some Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide. If anyone wants to join, feel so free to join my Discord. Absolutely. And I will help you out when you need it. So, as I say at every end of every stream, live long and prosper, and may the Lord Triforce be with you. Always. I shall see you guys. Absolutely. Night, South. Good night, Dragon. Good night, Cecil. Live long and prosper, may Laura Triforce be with everybody. Absolutely.